Then, yeah, just wear the beanie. That's it. That's pretty solid. I feel good about that. That's a good way to start this. Get the attitude up high, you know. Go trade two J's if you could become Wolverine. Where are you getting all this information? I definitely heard some some rumors about it. Are you still going? For, I, I can't get goosebumps thinking about it because it's like you can hear them get the car. I was going to qualify and I was going to drive it out the racetrack. Just threw the hood over the ditch and longest employee of Knox. You did some digging there, huh? All right, Formula Drift fans, we've got the merch deal back again. I was able to finagle my way in there, cut some deals, you know, grease some palms, all that fun stuff. So that means if you're looking for some awesome FD merch, you know what to do. Podcast 24 at checkout, save yourself 20%. So go head over to shopfd.com, get yourself some awesome shirts and hats and stuff like that. I'm still working out the hat deal. Don't worry, we'll, we'll figure out the hat deal. But for right now, head over to shopfd.com. Save 20%, use podcast24 at checkout. That's podcast, the number two, number four. I don't have to spell it all out. I'm saving you a bit of time and uh, save yourself 20%. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Outer Zone, the official podcast of Formula Drift. And we have what might be a fresh face to some people, but if you're really into drifting, this like you already know who who this is. Uh, Reese Marin, we, do you, I feel like I'm starting these always off with like a nickname. Do you have a nickname yet or is that something we're still waiting on? Uh, no, I mean, uh, my real name is Mauricio, um, like better. but I just, I, I switched over to Reese, um, because it was just a lot easier for people to pronounce. That's fair. I like, I like Mauricio. For whatever better. reason. I, I do too. I think it's a, it's pretty exotic, but, um, <laughs> it just, people would just chop it up. So I just stuck with Reese, you know what I mean? For since I started drifting. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of waiting for Jared to like officially put his touch on your name. I have a feeling it's, it's going to go down like the Reese's pieces route or something like that. Oh uh, yeah, I hear that a lot. I mean, if that's that's probably the most common. Like, yeah, I've heard that a million times. You know, the Reese's PC. So, yeah. I mean, if that's that, I'm cool with that. You know, <laughs> yeah, it could, <laughs> you know it could be worse. There's like way worse things that that you could be nicknamed. That's for sure. yeah, for sure. I, you know, I'll dodge that bullet. We'll just take in Reese's PC. Sure, I'm <laughs> down with that. <laughs> Sick. Uh, well, I mean, for people listening who may not know who you are, do you want to give me like the uh, what do you guys call it? the cliff notes of 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 who you are as a person and drifting knowledge? um so i'm an instructor uh i drive uh, a judge all around the country predominantly on the east coast i do some international stuff as well too um spotted for multiple drivers in formula drift Mm -hmm. and uh just recently with chelsea uh during his championship season you know I, i wasn't there the entire time i actually came in i don't know if many people know when i came in but i actually came in starting orlando is when I started that. So yeah, I I remember you and I having a conversation about that. Just being like, you kind of got the phone call, and I mean, it's it's interesting to like kind of see how his season even changed at that point too, which is is kind of sweet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, he's he's really good at what he does, and um, a lot of people say that it, there was a big change when I showed up. As much as I'd want to take credit for that, um, <laughs> um, I think Chelsea was just in the mindset, and he's at a skill level. Um, and he was at that point in time, he was just like, look, I just need someone I can trust that has my back that I don't really have to talk to a lot about what I'm looking for. Mm. You're just going to already know. And that's pretty much how it went. So, I mean, I'm not saying it was the easiest to spot for Chelsea. I just think there was just a formality and I know me, me and him know each other already and have a good relationship that it made doing that a lot easier. And it was obviously a ton of fun because, uh, we were just on the podium a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think a lot of it just comes down to like almost like being able to speak the same language instantly that like the the and uh, the amount of technical prowess that both of you guys have like there's a lot of stuff you can skip over and and the economy of words that can be used like I've heard I've, I've listened to a lot of spotters and that communication has to be so precise so quick and and exactly what the driver needs to hear good or bad and I think if nothing else that's one of the biggest things I, I saw between you two is like, you knew exactly what to say. And sometimes he didn't want to hear it, but you knew what needed to be said. And I think that's the difference. It was, I don't think anybody knows this. Um, and we'll say it now cause he's retired. Um, but we would win. And then there would be a playful, but serious argument <laughs> about oh i'm pumped i won but it was more so like i didn't win the way i wanted to win mm. 
Like Chelsea wants to slaughter and murder and win his style, pedal to the metal. And as a friend, I want him to do that. As a friend, I want him to kill it. Yeah. But I'm not his friend in that situation. I'm his spotter. Mm. So there was times I had to tell him to dial it back. And he did. And we did good. And I'm I'm, I'm not saying that's what made him win every time. I'm, I just contributed to it. But we would have little arguments. He was like, you know, I want to drive this way. You know, I, I don't like the fact that I had to dial myself back. And he started doing it more and more because during practice, as, as you know, maybe not the fans know because they're not privy to that. He's so aggressive in practice. Yeah. He's so aggressive. And there was this one time that I told him and I told him to stop. And then finally at the next round, he got aggressive again. And before I can even say anything, he was like, all right, my bad, my bad. My bad. <laughs> let me, let me dial it back. Yeah. So I think he knew what he needed to do to win. And I, I was just a small percentage of what went into that season for him because that RTR team is amazing mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, to see what they do over there and the every every person man and woman that's on that team is just dude it's it's insane it was it was crazy to just sit back and watch it all unfold in front of me it was just it was truly a pleasure it was a roller coaster for sure yeah yeah on, on chelsea's practice side of things like he you know, there's always the joke about like going out to win practice and i really feel like that was shaped around him in the last couple of years and I think the the issue is like he wanted to go out and 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 win practice. He wanted to go, you know, 10 tenths the whole time, 100%. And a lot of the drivers in practice aren't doing that. They're dialing in like small sections. They'll the you'll see guys almost like not botch an initiation, but do a very hesitant initiation and then, you know, really set themselves up for a, a particular section of the track. They'll work on sections of the track. Whereas Chelsea, mm-hmm. it seemed, did not do that. He was like, every run that I go out, that practice run is going to be a 100-point run from the time that we unloaded from the trailer. Whereas you would see, I mean, we just had Adam on, and Adam talked about it, where he would do a really safe run, and then he would start to push the car out wider and wider every run. Uh, other guys like uh, Osbo, you'll see, like, he'll do a good initiation, and then he, you'll you'll watch him dial in one corner over and over and over again until he's got it perfect, and then move to the next one. But Chelsea was just like, I'm, I'm just going. Like, that's it. Like, I'm going to run this yeah, like yeah. it's the last yeah. run I ever get. And he's always been that way since I've known him as a teenager. So <laughs> that, that is, he's he's always been like, nah, we can do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like not an issue at all. Um, but, you know, that his whole theory was if I can, he'll just know. He'll go and do a lap and he'll just be like, oh, th- that's it. Cool. Then he immediately goes into chasing. Mm-hmm. And his whole theory was if he can chase, you know, he can chase someone that maybe isn't doing the best at the moment. He's like, I can chase anybody at that point. Yeah. So he had his own theory and philosophy of, uh, about how he went about it and stuff. So it was really interesting and um, to see it. And um, like I said, it was just, it was cool to see him talk with James and then talk to Vaughn and then talk to Adam. Um, it was cool to be in that presence of all those drivers. Really cool to be with James Dean and kind of just get his theory and how how he how he likes to pivot the car and how Adam likes to go about doing things and how Chelsea does things. It's like, and again, I can't really have that conversation with a lot of people because like there's a precursor of knowledge and education that has to be there right. um, for you to really understand and really get the uh the enjoyment out of those conversations yeah it's it's tough i find even for myself and i would consider myself fairly technical by no means as technical as as a lot of the guys in drifting um oh you're good i i i'm trying man i'm i'm there you're good i'm you're good. i'm humbled quite a lot but i'm happy to be humbled like uh just just some of the conversations i've had with different people it's just like oh like i have so much more to learn <clears throat> but having those conversations when you know you can speak on a very technical aspect of it, like no matter what it's about <laughs> is so fulfilling. Like, like even like with my day job, every once in a while I'll run into somebody who does the same thing I do. And it's just like a click where you're like, Oh shit, I can use the same terms. Like I can use the same acronyms. Like I don't have to elaborate what this term means. You just know, mm-hmm. Oh, it's, it's, it's such a, it's such a good feeling. <laughs> yeah. It, it feels like you're, it's, it's, it's very freeing yeah. and it's a, it's a very enjoyable to do that. And I'll be honest with you. Like I, I don't really get to have those conversations with a lot of people. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. So it just goes to show you like, there's a lot of fans of drifting, but there's, uh, I think there's only a handful of people that are really like knowledgeable, knowledgeable about that. And when I mean a handful, I mean like in comparison to how many people like drifting now. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, I've, I've, I've kind of talked about like, even with the the viewership of this show where it's really the, the 5%. Like if you take the whole viewership of of FD and and dial it down to like what this gets on YouTube and and everything else, like it's about five percent, and it's it's simply because like you know we get into a, a level of detail in a lot of cases that a general fan may or may not care. But I've also compared that to other sports, like you know into hockey and and other things that I watch, and all of those podcasts, all those niche things it kind of reflects around the same percentage. And it's because there's just a lot of casual fans, which is great. But for me, like all I want to do is take a casual fan and turn them into a hyper fan. And it's like, you can do what's cool is like you can do that in so many ways, whether it's the yeah. personalities, the cars, the technical aspect, like, you know, the drama, if you will, like that's, there are people who just love drifting for the drama. <laughs> oh, I, I got to realize that this year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I'm glad you brought that up about the casual fans and I'm glad you brought up the other sports because I was thinking about that the other day where, you know, hockey very well. Mm. I know of hockey, <laughs> right? you know, yeah. and there was a time where the flyers were making a run for the Stanley cup or something. And for a brief moment, I, you know, I was invested, you know, and it had, you have been next to me and I would have, emotionally said something because I'm invested now mm -hmm. and something that's relating to me, you would have seen that emotionally, I probably would have had my heart in the right place and saying something, but you having your knowledge would have been like, I see why you're saying that, but you're wrong because of X, Y, and Z. Right. So how many people exist in hockey that are like that? Right. Probably tons and in every sport. So imagine how much exists in drifting. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we do our best, I think, to try to educate and, and, and explain to people. Um, but I just think a lot of us just need to realize that the internet is the way it is and it isn't going to change and casual fans are, they're just going to be there. We need them to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're the ones that are paying the tickets. They're the ones, I mean, I'm eating off of that. Yeah. You know <laughs> yeah, what yeah. I mean? So it's like, so it is what it is. So I kind of, sometimes I, I play the game and I kind of feed into it. Cause I'm just like, you know what? Like, this is my life. Yeah. Uh, drifting is 24 hours a day, seven days a week for me. For this person, it's just something they're into maybe on the weekend. And I understand that's a reality. And I think the faster we come to that, I think uh, maybe people won't get so upset when they see things on the internet because they love me right now. But I bet you after round one and two, they're going to hate me. Yeah. Are you, are you ready for that? Like, have you, have you kind of braced yourself for you just literally the load that is judging? Like, I think that's the best way to explain it. Just a weight. Um, I think we're in a very unique time in drifting right now. And I think I'm very lucky at the moment because I'm sure as you've seen, the internet's all about me doing this. <laughs> you know what <laughs> right. I mean? Well, so I'd be an idiot not to say I'm not going to try to ride this, but I think I should do some good while the spotlight is on mm -hmm. me. Right. And I, what I mean by that is I appreciate what everyone is saying. All right. And it, what it looks like right now is the majority of the internet or the people that are supporting me like the way I think when it comes to drifting. Right. Right. But the way I think when it comes to drifting comes from Brian Egger mm. comes from Brian Lante. Yeah. These were the people that helped me, especially Brian Egger. You know what I mean? Like definitely. And, you know, and even this year with Chris Yule and Robbie Nishida, there's been times that, because I'm emotionally evolved because I'm Chelsea spotter and the heat of the moment, I'd be like, what the hell was that call? <laughs> I've seen it. I was there. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then I'll turn around. And I remember Chris Yule was coming up the stairs and the judges were coming up and I was like, I see why you did. I think it was with James and I'm like, I, I saw what he did. You know what I mean? But in the moment I, I wasn't, I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a lot of respect for the judges for catching those things in the moment. They completely separate themselves from everything. And that's something that Brian Egger has taught me very well. So I, I just say that because like, you know, the difference between competition drifting outside of formula drift and formula drift, it's, it's staggering. Mm -hmm. And you have to be really good 
first to be there and you have to be good as a judge and i respect all of the judges that are that are there and especially vernon that's coming in with the vast amount of of experience that he has you know i mean truth be told i have the least amount of experience on that panel i mean let's let's keep it real you know and i mean i'm very enthused and but i'm more about learning even more or understanding why these calls are being made and having these replays and stuff like that so if if everyone's on board with me coming on then i think everyone should be a little bit more open-minded on what's already happening in fd mm-hmm. and you know these those gentlemen are doing a really good job i think they did I, I didn't really have an issue with Lante or anybody that was on there. I was like, you know, but again, when we have those casual fans, they're not going to know. Right. You know what I mean? So I think that's just something that I think if I have the attention on me now, let's all kind of, you know, yeah. let's, let's be a little bit more, more open-minded about it. You know what I mean? And maybe that'll save me down the line mm-hmm. halfway through the season when people are trying to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> really get on. Me. Well, I, I think everybody... Like, this is the thing, like, even let's say like the old judges panel and and the new judges panel now, because it's, it's a, it's a big shakeup. And I mean, overall, I think, you know, uh, Ryan Sage kind of going solo now, this has been one of the biggest shakeups in FD in a very, very long time. If not, you know, I think we'll look back on Ryan kind of taking the reins as, as the biggest shakeup ever, but we're just living through it right now. So it's very difficult to see. But if you, if you look back at the old panel, like every one of those judges brought something to the table that was very, very unique. And I think just because of the, the length of time that we had that set up, people forgot about it very quickly. And I think now just with same thing with how it's going, it'll bring a bit of a spotlight to the fan that's been maybe watching for three or four years to then be like, oh, these people are, they've got different opinions and different thoughts and stuff. And it's like, that was always the case. We just... Exactly. You know, a, a four year fan base uh, person just maybe didn't have the information to understand what Ryan Lontane had had done years previous or, you know, what, you know, what he had developed and how much of the rule book and judging and rules that a lot of people liked came from his brain. And, yeah. you know, like right now, I mean, perspective wise, you're bringing in a lot of just um, uh, realistically passenger seat time. Like you bring in something that I don't yeah. know if we've seen in a long time. And that's somebody who has sat in the passenger seat of a drift car for countless numbers of hours as an instructor, which mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know of anybody else. Like I don't know Vernon's history as well as I know everybody else's, but mm-hmm. I do know that he's going to bring in that European and and not just European global perspective of drifting that we haven't really seen yet. Right. Nobody I don't, I mean, it's, it's hard to say like Lontane's done a bunch all over the world, but like he stemmed from the U S and then went out. This is somebody who stemmed from somewhere else, traveled the world with drifting and now is coming to FD with a very different perspective on all of it. So it's going to be yeah. good. It's, I mean, I, I, it's going to be good regardless. I mean, I think Sage, I, I'm, well, I don't know if, I don't know if he's the one who makes the final decision on this or who were the people he talked to. Yeah. Uh, to make this decision happen but when you sit back and you look at it you have robin nishida from japan you have vernon who's coming from europe right um and there's a huge people this will resonate with we all talk about drift masters you know it's a thing well now we got someone who comes from that world Mm -hmm. and then you have me coming from the east coast with the grassroots drifting and all the american i guess newer generation and then you have brian egger who I mean, he's been around since day one, Yeah, you know, uh, he's one of the reasons we even have as much drifting as I don't think people understand how much Brian does for drifting. I don't, I don't think yeah. people, if, you know, like if something cool is happening, Brian is probably somewhere there making probably that probably touched you know it. Yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like what you said before, like he's kind of like the platform or he helps us kind of get to where we need to go. Brian has seen me drive start compete he's seen me go through everything yeah. and now i'm sitting next to him yeah so like to me it goes full circle so I, again just to reiterate i just have a lot of respect for those dudes mm-hmm. yeah it's it it's gonna be nice i think i mean there's 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 so many different ways that this is gonna swing i'm waiting for the first day the first run which probably won't take long where vernon disagrees with the other two judges if if he is the first like because i believe you guys are doing a rotation again um, he may sit out for the first one. I have no idea. I really don't know. But the first time he disagrees with everybody, 
that chat is going to explode. And people are like, oh, this is why, like, this is different. But they will forget about all of the times where it was unanimous and he agreed with everybody. Or vice versa. Or same thing. Like, you disagreeing with somebody be like, oh, that's the grassroots perspective. Like, that's that's somebody, like, you know, that's somebody who's not tainted by 1,200 horsepower cars, even though, you know, you've kind of been around them for, you yeah. know, like a decade. I drive, like, I, I drive one that has, that has a lot of power currently now, and it's like... Yeah. I get it. I love their enthusiasm, though. Yeah, you're yeah. right. It's, it, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I, we can foresee it. You know? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, there's there's yeah. so many things that are are changing and happening in the future that, like, I'm already. I can like, you know, I go to sleep and I see the comment section rolling through in my brain, and it's like, and it's it's not anything against the audience. It's just like there is a very vocal minority that is always going to say the same stuff no matter what happens, and then there's. Uh, the vast majority who's quiet and doesn't have chat on and is just sitting there very much enjoying the entire show. So absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Just like any sport. Oh. I mean, I, I mean, I'm from Philadelphia, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, we got the Eagles. I don't watch football at all, yeah. but if you're from Philadelphia, you know that they're just, they're a certain type of breed. Mm-hmm. So being around that, being from, being from club loose, being in Philadelphia, being around this certain demographic in the Northeast, I don't think I'm going to be shaken by anything that comes from a fan or a driver. I'm going to be like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. you know, like this is my job. Sorry. Like, I, and I've seen many judges say this in the past, whether it's pro am judges or whatever they say, like, we don't take the position to be a judge to become popular. Yeah. You know, we we're doing it for the sport. Someone has to be the punching bag. And for the last, you know, X amount of years, these guys have been the punching bag. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, and that, that's just what you're going to get in this sport. And it's a judge sport. So it's going to be subjective. You're, you're always going to have arguments. So it's, uh, that's just, that's just the name of the game. You know what I mean? Like, and if some people are about it, some people are not, I kind of laugh at it. Um, but we need that type of stuff because that's what makes people show up to the, to watch. That's what people, you know, makes people go and watch these events in person. Like that's, you need people to be emotionally involved. Yeah. As much as it sometimes may get under some people's skin because you might be what they're focusing on at the moment. Like, yeah. this is what you wanted, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah I mean, that's a good point. Yeah. It's, you, we need, we need people to be emotional about this part. It's the only way it's going to grow, right? Like, yeah. it's, it's a balancing emotional and informed, right? Like, and, and that's the thing is like one of those can, can start to trump the other in, in some interesting ways. Like, I, I feel like I'm very informed. So like, I often don't get emotional about calls because of that information, but I will get emotional about other things. And then there are people who are not as informed, but more emotional. So they, they trigger emotion because they don't have the information to say, oh no, this is the right thing. So it's, it's, it is, it's an interesting balance between the two. And like, I mean, same thing, you see it with drivers, you see it with the judges stand is, or the, the spotter stand where like, there are some spotters who get very, very emotional. And there are some that like, they don't say a word. Like their driver could could absolutely have crushed it and something gets missed and, you know, they could have easily have petitioned it and won it and they just, okay, and that's it. And they just walk away. Like, it's so interesting to see it how is. different everybody is up in that that stand. Well, as soon as you said that, I thought about uh, Dan Chow, Matt Fields, um, yeah. spotter. Yeah. <laughs> He's stone faced. Yes. Though nothing and unless you like know him like he's funny oh he's, he's so funny. great guy he's hilarious but when he's working it's like yeah this is the board goes I, up over his mouth right and then yeah. like every once in a while you just see him like he'll open the door for the for the judges and just stick his head in and like doesn't say anything everyone just you could feel it you, you turn around he's there and he's like one minute and then somebody like it's just yeah same I thing love it. yeah but he, he is emotional. I told him about it. like yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah he's 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 an awesome dude, but yeah, that's the first person I thought about. Like this year, uh, we we just uh, we came together uh, a lot closer. This year, we got to talk a lot more, and uh, it's just really cool. Uh, someone else that you get to meet, but he's he's an amazing spotter. Mm-hmm. He's just has a lot of information in his head. I'm a really cool dude. I'm I'm curious what the dynamics going to be like too. Now that you're you're fresh out of that seat into the next one, like what the communications will be like from the spotters to you, like how how they're going to communicate with you when, when you fill in as like the driver steward. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like it's, it's going to be interesting because I don't think we've seen this in a while where, where spotters moved into the judges seat quickly. Um, I think what's going to, I don't think I really, I think, I, I think 
because I was just there, mm. I, I think we're all kind of, no matter who it is, no matter who you are, what team it is, I think we all kind of are like a little family. Mm. And I'm assuming that for some of them, seeing one of their own go up there, there's going to be a little bit, not favoritism or anything, but there's going to a little bit more ease. Like, hey, listen, man. Or I'm hoping like if they do get upset about a call, they kind of check themselves and say, all right, I'm not going to go in there guns a blazing. Right. There has to be a reasonable explanation. And I think a lot of the spotters, every one of those spotters are good. Mm-hmm. Every one of the drivers there drive really good. You're like you're, you're at the you know the crumb of the crumb. Yeah. It's it's formula drift. Um, and I, I think the transition is going to be fine. I mean, I've never really been in a situation judging anywhere else where I've had issues with people getting overly excited or mad or anything like that to the point where it's enough for me to remember mm. it. And I really do think that that's going to transition over into a uh, formula drift. And again, I, I think there's a unique tidal wave of, uh, of people liking the way things are going. And I think that's really going to help myself, Vernon and all the other judges that are there to kind of just ride that out. You know what I mean? I just really want people to understand that. Like if you want to understand the sport more that you have to put the effort into learn just like anything else, right. you know what I mean? Like we're going to try our best to explain things and be thorough and convey these information, the information as clearly as possible, but understand that we are under a time crunch. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we have to focus, use the tools that we have around us to make a call quickly and accurately, you know, it takes a certain skill level and it takes a certain amount of concentration and, you know, that's what we're doing up there. And that's what everyone's going to do. Be unbiased. And like, uh, I don't know how many times I hear people say it's going to be unbiased. There's not going to be any favoritism now. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's rigged. I, I can assure everyone, I can assure everyone, this is not rigged. Yeah. This is not, there is no favoritism. There's there, the data shows that there is, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's not like that. I get it. You guys love the sport as much as I do, but this isn't rigged. This isn't WWE. This isn't any of that. This is a bunch of guys that are really trying their hardest to put on the most amazing show possible sideways. And you guys just so happen to see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like everyone's doing their job and it's, it's as legit as it possibly could be. And that goes for, I think almost any series that I know of. Yeah. I've, I've never heard of anybody like taking a dive or, or like anything like that. Like it's, yeah. it's, these dudes have way too much pride for that. They're not going to, they're, do that. they're <laughs> like, you know, I don't mean this in like a, a negative <laughs> term, but like there's so much ego on the line. So like to, to do something like that just seems so out of character. Like there's the, the moment the visor goes down, the, these people turn into animals. Like, yeah, it's kill mode. Yeah. You just like go watch any in car. Like, and a lot of it's like been edited and stuff like that. That's why I'm very excited for like when, when we start seeing more in-car stuff and like, you can, you know, it's, you see these, the, they're, these human beings change and, and sometimes right. it happens three cars before the line. Sometimes it happens in the burnout box. Like, but there's, there is a, a very much a change in, in these drivers. It's wild. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, I don't think. That it's, it's been, it's been really cool. Like, um, for anybody listening, like we're recording this, what the day after the announcement, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. and so literally 24 hours. Yeah. Later. And, and you and I have been kind of discussing it for a little bit. I, I'd, I'd heard some rumors of it and, you know, I, 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 I definitely put in a good word for you. Cause like when, oh, man, dude, no, I, I've said it. I don't know how many times that like, I do think you have some of the best eyes in drifting. Like I, I, a good example of this, like anybody really wants to know if you don't know Reese, go, go check out his TikTok. One, hilarious uh it's so out of pocket sometimes man yeah but those kids those kids are those kids will i I said it on the on the other podcast we had that those if you want to be humbled as a driver or as anybody go on tiktok and go put what you put on instagram go put on tiktok and watch how these 13 to 19 year olds or whatever it is bury yeah but they do it in the most loving this is like look this is our world We're going to trash talk you if you can hang cool. And if not too bad. And again, luckily coming from the background that I have, I just kind of ride with it. And, um, 
you know, I don't, you know, I, th- I know they're just messing around. They're just busting, you know, yeah. busting my chops as much as possible. It's, and it's so creative too. Like I will give, I will give this, this younger generation, like I got a 10 year old. So like, you know, I, I'm, he's on the, obviously like on the early side of this generation, but like, yeah. dude, they're so creative. He got mad at me the other day. What did he say? It was like something like, Something along the lines of like, I hope, I hope you can't relace your shoes or something. And like, that was, that was the way he was trying to like dig me. And I was like, I'm not even mad. That was like creative. And, and yeah, that's a terrible thing to say was, to somebody. It was layered. Yeah. You know, yeah. It was, <laughs> was like, there was some thought that went into that. And I've seen stuff like that on TikTok where like people will just. I'm going to say that to you. I'm like, I hope you can never lace your shoes. Yeah. Again. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that little aglet piece falls off or whatever. Like. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it is, it's interesting. I mean, it's such a unique platform in that way that like. You know, it's, we've seen, we've seen different platforms grow with different generations. I mean, arguably, yeah. you know, I was kind of like the end of the MySpace, Facebook and Instagram was like my main thing. So it's like to go over onto TikTok and see 13, 14, 15 year olds just absolutely destroying me because I forget that I'm 20 years older than they are. <laughs> oh yeah. They could care like less how much older or how much experience we yep. have. They're just like, whatever. but it's cool. If you, if you give those kids the time. And, and, and kind of roll with yeah. them. A lot of those guys now come back and defend me on a lot of the posts. Yeah. They're like, no, he checks out because now they go do research. He checks out. Because they go do research because they're trying to find information on you to bury yeah. you. But then when they go find the information, like, oh, this dude checks out, then they get your back. Yeah. So it's like a real, it's like a gang in there, dude. It's, it's, it's really funny, but it's, uh, I, I'm blessed and I, and I try to tell those guys all the time, thank you so much because my drifting school grew mainly because of tiktok right you know because of all and it's because a lot of the kids that show up are 13 14 15 16 years old come to my school to transition from the simulation world to actually doing it in irl in real life so it's it's really cool to see that yeah it's it's i mean it's such a great platform in in that regard too and i think like if you are you know if you're into drifting and you really want like drifting is not big on tiktok like it, like no, it's no. not, there is not a ton of drifting content no. in there. Like it's, it's, no. and you know, for anybody who's driving, like don't just personally, don't just like repurpose an Instagram, super sick, crazy cut reel. Cause they don't do as well on TikTok. Like no, they need to see your face yeah, is what you it know. needs to be like lowbrow production, <laughs> you know, and, and you got to catch their attention like immediately, like within a second, mm-hmm. you have to catch them. Yeah, you have, you've absolutely. literally the amount of time it takes for you to just scroll up. That's it. That's all the time you have. So however long for it, it takes you to scroll once, that's how long you have to catch their attention. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, one of the kids told me like, you need to grab the attention. Like you should review, um, some of the sim stuff. Mm-hmm. So one of my biggest, it got like millions of views was that I was just grading or judging a couple of initiation runs yeah. on this thing called Rebox or something or Reblox. Roblox. It was drifting. Roblox. Uh, or so yeah, it was drifting. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. So I'm watching it. And those kids came in there, bro. <laughs> they came in there with the the fury of like, who do you think you are? Blah, blah, blah. And I did it on purpose because I knew it's going to get a rise. This is their world. How dare me? Yeah. That comes from the real world, you know. But again, those people ended up coming through. And now, you know, I talked to a lot of them and stuff like that. I've driven with a lot of them on in in different um rooms and in, in simming and in, in sim drifting because I still I do that still. I think it's fun. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, it's cool. Cause it's like, now you're meeting these kids that are like nerds about drifting. And I've always been a nerd about this stuff. So it's kind of cool to just, when, when my older friends are like, ah, all right, I'm done with that. I'm like, oh, let me go to the younger guys. They're still fresh into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, so it's, I kind of like cheat the system that way. Well, I, I think it's, I think it's important. Like I remember kind of transitioning out of like the car show culture and people <clears> like, oh, it's dying. And I'm like, yeah, it's dying because we just shit on anybody who has a basic question that we would have had six, seven years ago. Like, you know, if you, if you get mad at somebody who's like, Hey, how much horsepower can I get out of a cold air intake? Like just educate them. And this goes back to like the drifting side. Just like, Hey man, like you're probably not going to make a whole lot. It's going to sound a little different, but like, Mm -hmm. that's kind of it. Also be careful in the rain that you don't suck up a bunch of water instead of just being like, don't buy that. Don't waste your money. Like I, I think just the way we go about it and like hearing, you know, you going into like to, to Roblox drifting, which is like, I bet you most people listening to this that are above Don't the age of know. 30 have no idea what Roblox is, unless you got no kids, that is. right? Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, you just, you kind of went like 8-bit. It's basically like 8-bit drifting, but for the modern world. And you went in and, and you know, 
went into the trenches oh. and battled your way out and came out with like converts. I thought I was game over. <laughs> I'm like, what did I do? Why am I here? What did I do? Yeah. Why, why am I even? And these kids were coming with such good comebacks, man. And I was like, I don't got nothing for yeah. this, you know. And it was, but it was great. It was, it was a great learning experience, and um, I love that community. I, I, I love what I, you know, I, I've now grown on, um, on Instagram. I know exactly where that growth came from. That came from the Drift Appalachia stuff. Ah, okay. Um, um, that's where that growth came from because. Uh, Togi's cool right now. You know, ain't no way around it. You know, <laughs> I, mean, so, I don't think it's ever. It's always been. I was cool. just gonna say. Yeah, it's always. Been I think cool. it's always been cool. We just we kind of finally found a way to to do it correctly. And all, I mean, I say we, Brian. Like let's let's again. A, again. Brian found a way yeah. to do it correctly. Brian and Edgar, Edgar from Drifting. Oh, right. Thank and you. Derek and, and, and Derek King, yes. Derek King, for people that don't know, Derek King is really the one who got this stuff in motion and originally spoke to the dude originally and got that thing yeah. done. So a really good group of guys over there. But they, they, I don't want to like give credit to, to too much or to one person, but like they figured out also like to bring out media and like make sure there was good media there. And there was like, you know, that, that was the the biggest thing. Like, I think anybody who's like struggling to like have a drift event grow, make sure you bring out like good media and treat your media well. I mean, I'm super biased because I came from the media game, but it's like, <laughs> those are the people that are going to share your shit because the drivers are too busy. Yeah. I love drivers, but most of them are really terrible at social media and like, they don't, they're not going to, they're not bringing out uh, a massive camera or whatever, like bring good media. I, I was joking. Yeah. Haven sandwiches. Yeah. Once again, that's kind of how I, I, I mean something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I, I it was really good. I think nine uh, nine nine two did an amazing job with media going to uh, Drift Appalachia, yeah. and I, you know, and I've learned so much from Russo, um, who's you know part of nine nine two, and he's explained so many things to me. And I think having those good group of people around me that kind of directed how I should be doing some things media wise really helped out a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, you know, you can be the best driver in the world, but the people that you have around you and who you're networking really, really say a lot and really help in reality. So I will say Russo is, uh, is my idol when it comes to airplane bathroom selfies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like he'll post them and I'm like, damn, how does he make that room look so big? And he's not like, he's a big guy, but like, I like go, I'll go into the bathroom, I'll have my phone in my pocket. And I'm like, there's no way I can make this look like mostly because I just dress in black and Russo's always got some crazy sick outfit on. So he has style. Oh, bro. Dude. Like he just, he has this, like, that's why I've been, <laughs> if you've noticed, I've actually put him more and more or not, I put him in, but I told him that, yo, you should get in these videos more with yeah. me because I'm going to always give the nerd side of drifting because that's just what I, that's just what I am an instructor. That's just what I do. He is just way more fun and interactive, <laughs> which is really weird because I'm usually like that in person, you know. He's generally um, but ridiculous. On camera, yeah. yeah, he's just a ridiculous oh, yeah. human being, like in the best yeah. possible sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's he's awesome. I've traveled everywhere with that dude. It's again, it's just it's really good to have good people and really good to have someone like him who's media. Mm -hmm. And if you're a driver and you're out there and you're trying to make it big, like media is almost as important as your build. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're the people that no one's going to know who you are unless you have good media. Um, so that's why you got to put the time and effort into that. I know it sounds crazy, but hey, man, that's just the world we look. It shouldn't sound crazy because skateboarders have that guy with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's that's what happens. The dude there with the camera riding with them, like if they can do it, now, obviously the cost is a lot lower. So I get that. But, but I mean, yeah. here's the thing, too. Like if you're budgeting for a bill, just budget for media, like the same way you would budget for an engine budget for media. Like that's. That's it. Like, and, and like on that point, like your car can break down and you can still produce a good video. I've seen some incredible videos of, of drivers and, and other sports where like the entire weekend went wrong or they put down like two laps and the rest of the video is just them screwing around. Like Dean Carney stuff, like Dean's had a couple of rough years. His content is incredible. Like it's so good. And it's, you know, like, so, but, or on the opposite end, you could have a perfect weekend you could win an event, but if you have had no one to record it, no, like that's it. It doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. It, yeah. You can win. I, I, I mean, and, and this is another, maybe a reality check for a lot of people. Like you can go win, but like if you win something or you win an event, okay. And yeah, like we're, we're going to forget about it by the next event. You know what I mean? That's just what's good. That's the world we live in. So unless, you know, like I knew, I knew when I took the in-car footage, 
going downhill, I needed to post it while the event was still going on. Right. Because everybody in the world or who knew about that event going on at the moment was waiting for yeah. it. That's the prime time to drop. But like, you're not going to know that, you know, like, unless you have someone that's like, yo, man, you should, you should probably do this. And that's why again, I'm really grateful. I have good people around me that say, yo, man, like you need to do that. You know what I mean? Like that's part of it now. Yeah. before early on in drifting, you could just be good and win. And that was enough. Mm-hmm. That's where I, that's where I came in drifting. And then I noticed it was a shift. And like everyone talks about how like, you know, we want drifting to evolve and stuff. Like if you want drifting to evolve, you have to be willing to take everything that comes with that evolution. And some of those things may not be something you agree with, but that's a byproduct of the evolution. So you can't be mad about that. Be grateful. Let's be grateful that we can go to drifting almost every single weekend right now in the United States. Yeah, it's Because when I started, it wasn't like that. I mean, that was before my time, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like these kids, like they can, they can throw a rock and go to a drifting event right now. So, like the golden era of drifting, in my opinion, is right now. I'm telling you, right now, we can talk about the early 2000s and everything, like whatever. But you, the amount of drifting that's happening right now, either the last couple of years and what's going to happen, what I think in the next five years, in 50 years they're going to look back and be like, "Damn, that was it. They had it so good back then." Yeah. Mark my words, they're going to be like, "Damn, that was it." They're going to look back at this time and be like that, like the way we look back at group B. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's what they're going to look at. That's a, Mark my words. That's a very, that's very what, good way of, of putting it. I, I mean, to like, to touch on a couple things that you talked about there and, and, and also like my last point about media is like, if you ask people, if you ask people how they got into drifting, there's a few answers, but a lot of the time you're going to hear option DVDs, right? That's a huge one, which is that is mm. good media that got a bunch of people into drifting. You'll hear Bloodmasters, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing. Not nothing against those guys, but like by today's standard, that driving wasn't all that amazing. It was super cool. They did some incredible shit, especially for the time. And like, yes, there are parts of those videos that would hold up today. It was the attitude. It, That's what it was the thought. attitude. Exactly. And like, I mean, you could, you could keep going. Like you could talk about, you know, fresh tracks. You could talk about Turk. Like you could talk about whatever, but there are so many people that got into drifting from just generally good media. And, you know, like that's, we're going to hear the same thing. Somebody's going to come back and be like, oh, like I, I got into drifting because of field day from Matt Field. Or I got in, you know, I got into drifting because of, of whatever Dean, like, like you said, Dean Carney stuff. So yeah, it's, it's, that's it. It's, it's, you know, you need to, it's the gateway. Yeah, you know you know what I mean? And we, and, and the newer generation needs to understand, like I, I was fortunate enough to came, come up in the early two thousands and see when the, you know, when all the Japan drivers came over to English town, I got to see that. Mm-hmm. I'm happy. I got to, but the older generation needs to realize that the younger generation, they're not privy to that type of world. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're used to seeing Mustangs and, and, and Corvettes and like the chasers that are starting to come over now. And they're not really seeing two forties, like they're seeing three fifty Z's and G 35s. Yeah. So by nature, they're coming up and drifting in a completely different environment than we did. So we can't be mad at these kids cause they don't go do the research on what drifting was for us. Yeah. Like they don't care, man. They're just out there having fun. So well, it goes both ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's in, in the same way that like, you know, I don't know what your knowledge base of, of early 60s muscle cars are, but is some 60-year-old guy going to get pissed that you don't know all the variations of the early 60s Camaros? Like, right? These these kids definitely know what a 240 is. They understand the legacy of it. They understand generally what early 2000s JDM style is. But to then name drop a bunch of drivers that are no longer relevant to be upset that they don't know who they are is kind of ridiculous. Like it, it just exactly. is right. But they're, yeah. they're going to know, you know, they're going to know Taylor Ray. They're going to know TJ hunt. They're going to know all the big guys. They're, they're going to talk about people that you and I have no idea who they are, but they already have 500,000 followers or 500,000 subscribers. And, you know, as, as people who want to progress the sport, we have to accept that and go, Oh, I've never heard of him. Not, not be ignorant. Be like, Oh, I must not, I've never heard of him. He must not be good. Like, no, Cool. What's his channel? Let exactly. me see it. That's interesting. I want to know more. Like that's, that's the difference. Yeah. But. That's what I do. I go on and I look and yeah. I've seen some people that I'm like, Oh, that dude knows what he's talking about. And I ain't going to say who, but there's other people that I watch and I'm just like, nah, yeah. you know what I mean? But I mean, that, again, it's a free country. 
that's what the internet's for. That's what YouTube is for. Some people like the content. Some people don't. At a certain point, we have to leave the fan responsible to make the right decisions and mm-hmm. get the right information that, that's out yeah. there. Yeah. So so speaking about future drifting, where do you, <laughs> you know, now that you've already made one grand prediction, but like, what do you think we're going to start seeing in the next five years? Like, let's keep it, let's keep it relatively tight. Like, what are you seeing maybe either on the internet or grassroots or pro-am that is going to start trickling its way up or potentially what's going on in other racing that'll start trickling its way into FD or just drifting in general? It's, it's really hard to say because drifting is like, it's an ongoing fashion show. Mm. Um, in my opinion, um, every four years, something's different. Something's cool. I think that's what, I think that's really what, so it's really hard to say. I, the only thing I can say I, is the skill level is going to go through the roof. What that looks like may not be what we think it is, mm. but the skill level is going to go through the roof. I think in five years, we're going to see much younger drivers start showing up in my opinion. When I mean young, I mean like 18 going into like 20, 21. Uh, because what I think people don't understand is we all know circle track racing. We know middle America is pretty big on that, you know, in the East coast too. But you know, yeah. when you go into middle America, this is what I've been seeing more and more of these people that come from that family heritage of like racing. They're, they're now starting to get into drifting, you know, and there's money behind that. And again, it may not be what we, what we traditionally look as, as drifting, but that's coming. I see the kids that are starting to show up. Mm-hmm with and like let's and yeah with mom and dad's money like their whole family races they've been doing it for generations and generations this is a normal thing for them so you can't knock them for it you know what i mean um so i think we're going to see a lot more of that style wise i don't know (laughs) you know what i mean like that's up that's up to that's up to some 19 year old right now that's going to do something cool in the next two years or something you know what i mean like that's just what i've seen happen you know what i mean and it's really hard to say because every part of the country, in my opinion, does things a little bit differently. And America is really big. So I don't know. It's, it's all going to be good. I don't think it's anything that no one's going to not like. Um, it's just a beautiful thing to see it just continuously grow and grow and grow. So your guess is as good as mine on that one for most of that, but the driving skill will go up yeah. for sure. Which is, which is crazy to think about. Cause like, I feel like every, every couple of years we're just like, it can't get better than this. They can't get more proximity. They can't go faster. They can't be more ridiculous. And then like every year it's a little bit faster. They, they rub the wall a little bit longer. You know, they, they hold tandem just a little bit longer. Like it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a, I mean the, what are they, the frog in the, the pot, right? Like we, like it, the, the temperature is always rising. So you don't always notice that it's getting that much better. But if you were to step away for a couple of years and come back, you'd be like, what the hell happened to this sport? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I think that's very, that's very much the case for drifting. Um, it's a really cool sport. Um, it's, it's really cool to see how it started. I mean, I got into it because of initial D and I never thought in a million years, like, you know, cause back then everybody just thought it was a fat. Yeah. Everybody would just make fun. of. I remember I used to get made fun of like, Oh, why are you doing that? And blah, blah, blah. And my family was like, what are you doing? Like everyone, you know? And then now it's like everyone, for the most part, everybody knows what drifting is now. Yeah. And, uh, if that doesn't show how far we've come, uh, I don't know. It's going to be great. That's all I know. Yeah. I do agree with the younger thing. Um, I mean, we're, we're seeing it already. I mean, Brandon Sorensen's an easy one to, to like pop up, but like, seeing how good the Shanahan's are at the age they're at. Like we're, we're, we're talking world-class drivers, you know, arguably, I mean, you know, obviously winning what they've, they've won over there, but like arguably, you know, the, the best family right now in drifting, like, and, and their ages don't reflect that because they're, you know, they're driving like they're 10 years older than they actually are. Uh, A Brandon Sorensen, like I said, Brandon Sorensen coming up, um, you know, uh, uh, Hiro Manoa, like that's like, it's happening. It's definite. We've always had young people, but now we're getting a lot of young people who are like, I mean, uh, Simon Olson, another great example. Like people forget like dudes in his early twenties, like, yeah, he's a young, young, young guy. (laughs) Like 
it's it's happening quick and i think it's just a generation <sighs> so old. i know dude. well i mean you're older than me so i'll let you say that uh I'm 38 you're not that much older than me <laughs> i'm gonna be 39 so i just it's just crazy to see how these you're right it's just they're young they're they're good i'm a big i will give sim drifting the credit that it deserves yeah. with that it may not be for our generation but like I, I've seen, yes, the kids that come from the simulation world that come to Drift in real life, I, I they come to my school all the time. And yes, there is some bad habits, but I'm able to quickly adjust those habits because those kids are so much more open-minded Yeah, and they excel so much quicker. There's other limitations like, <laughs> excuse me, other limitations like their physical state. They don't understand G-forces yet. Yeah. You know, the, the little things like that. But we're talking about someone who's 15 years old. So if he continues practicing and every once in a while, when he turns 18, he gets a car by the time he's 21, as long as life didn't grab him and do whatever to yeah. him. Right. Cause that's a reality that dude's going to be, it depends. It, it's, it's all situational based, right? Yeah. But in theory, if you put more time on the clock, you will get better. Yeah. 10,000 hours, right? You know, uh, that's what they said, you know what I mean? I don't know where I'm at, but I'm nowhere close to that. I realized <laughs> it, got, it got depressing when I started trying to count it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, this is a waste. I'm just, I'm, I, I don't, even, I don't know. I don't even want to say it. Cause I, I don't even want to say what I thought it was. Cause I was just like, that's not cool enough. You know? <laughs> I think breathing is about the only thing I've stuck with for 10,000 hours. Like that's, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. We're pros on that. That's for sure. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. That, it's, I, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I've, in the, in the last year, I've actively tried to watch more pro am stuff, um, and and try and catch people coming up because like I want to I want to know, like and and the spotlight's not as big as it is with like other sports. Like you talk about football, you talk about basketball. These these kids are getting picked out in in public school, and guys are making predictions about what round they're going to go in for an NFL draft. Right? Hockey is the same thing. I have a ten year old. There's there's kids that my son plays with that are talking to agents at like 10 there's 14 year olds with full team like agent teams ready to go so for me like going into the drifting side of things i'm like cool like can i start to spot people in pro-am that like have something that i'm like i don't know what it is yet but there's something here and i'm i'm, I'm gonna keep tabs on you and watch and see what you do um because like i don't know about you but like it's it's weird. It's so hard to explain, but like I sometimes I'll watch somebody drive and I'll just be like, oh, you're if if as you said, if life doesn't hit you somewhere hard, you're gonna make it. Like you've got a real shot at this. And I've I've told people that too. Where I, I've said, like, hey, like stick with this. Like there's something here. Yeah, Ben Hobson. Yes, yes. Uh like I remember, I remember seeing him drive at Clutch Kickers way back in the day, and then I got to drive with him a little bit uh, at one of the drift weeks that we did. That I participated, I did a couple of stops, and again, this may go over some people's heads. Yeah. All right, but I think the coolest thing in drifting, or the make or break thing for me, what I'm impressed with, is how well people can time a transition. Yeah. Yeah. When you can forecast a transition and then dive in in the pocket and then hold your line there and then not in and not adjust things with your front wheels like that is so uh, it bros that is so hard, you know what I mean? <laughs> What's and to predicting? see someone do th Yeah, it's just like wow, and I see Ben has done that on many occasions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it was kind of rough when I drove with him. But it was still there, like the the meats and potatoes of it was there, and it's just gotten re more refined and more refined. Um, other drivers, I'm, I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, I, everybody knows I don't have favoritism, but there is some that I watch, and I'm just like, this is going to be good. Uh, Sully, yeah, Sully, like he has that too right now. Where I'm like, man, he's really getting the timing down. Just a lot of people just have really good time. And that's what impresses me. You know what I mean? Not that it's going to reflect how I view runs or anything, but it's just like when I look at drifting, there's certain things that I look for that really impress me. Mm. And seeing someone know how to time transitions and forecast what someone's going to do to a certain extent is just, I think that takes so much skill and so much confidence to just say, you know what, I'm just going to predict a second beforehand yeah. and go for it. I, I, you know? The one I always look for is confidence. And it's, 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 it's a very difficult thing to like put your finger on to like measure, but like 
the things I always look for is is commit <laughs> like commit like commitment's a part of confidence for sure, but like lack of adjustment, holding a line, even if that line is off a little bit, and not panicking that you're offline a little bit. Like there's mm-hmm. there's something to that too where drivers will will be offline by half a foot, right? Like nothing massive, but noticeable. And you'll see them panic to try and, and get in a little bit deeper and cause more of a problem than if they just committed and and then corrected it either at the next transition or the next corner or something like that. And like that is such a level of confidence in their own ability that that switches that. I mean, a lot of it comes with with age and experience, but like you can usually see it early, even at the grassroots level. Like you'll see, yeah. you'll see them transition. And then that wheel doesn't move and you don't, you don't see the back wheels lock up. You don't hear the engine tone change. And you're like, oh, like you, you're confident in your ability and you're confident in what the car is able to do. And, and you can hold that line in a way that somebody who doesn't have that confidence is, is kind of fluttering back and forth. Yeah. And it's, and I don't know, again, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know how the fans are looking at it, but if you go to practice, there is. Man, I really, I really wish they would live stream practice. Yeah, there is some heater runs in oh, there, and sometimes, wild. sometimes I've seen some runs where I'm like, man, someone get the video clip for that dude. Yeah, you know, because it was perfect. Like, that's the clip you show your homies. Like, yo, check this yeah. out. You know, yeah, you didn't do it in qualifying, but like, yo, check it out. You know what I mean? If you're really like, I, I'm a big en- enthusiast when it comes to drifting. So even when I see that, even if it's the person we're going against, I'm like, damn, that was, yeah. <laughs> that was really cool. You know what I mean? Because I, I'm a fan of the sport, you know, above and below anything. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm a fan of the sport. I just have had very different jobs in the sport. And I, I kind of take the whole fan thing out of it. Once I have to take that role as a, as, as a position, whether it's spotting or anything else, in this case, it's, it's judging now. But it's like there are some heater runs that are, are there, and I really wish people can see that. And that's what every driver ideally is going for, mm-hmm. to try to get that perfect run where you can see that they're effortlessly holding the line. They timed everything correctly, and it was it was perfect. And you see that every once in a while. Every one of those drivers has either done it at some point or is very much capable of doing it. Yeah. What you guys get to see is on demand, you know, like you got to do it right now. And that's where the competition comes in. Well, and it's it's... I think that's like where some of my frustration comes um, when people like will will shit on certain drivers who competition wise don't always do well. But you and I have seen it. Like I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I'll call it a, a few drivers. I mean, I, 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 the standings speak for themselves. But like, you take a, a Joao when Joao's car is working and in practice, he lays down some heater runs. May not be the fastest runs, but Rit lays down some heater. Kyle Mohan's another guy. Every once in a while, Kyle will pull something out and like, in, especially in practice and you'll hear people go, Oh, there he is. Like it's, it's, it, and it just shows how much stress goes into those qualifying runs and in those battle runs. And the majority of the time when those drivers are making those mistakes, it's not because they can't do it. It's, it's literally just a nerves thing. It's just, a, it's just getting yeah. yourself in the headspace to, to do it because we, we've seen it like, uh, I, I, my favorite one in Utah was Beecham. I saw Beecham in practice in Utah during the live stream. I said, I've got money on Beecham this round. He may not go all the way, but he's going to do better than he ever has. And sure shit. And it was because he put down three back to back to back practice runs that were 92, 93 point qualifying runs. And I went, this, he's, he's in the zone. He's in the flow state, whatever you want to call it. And you just, as long as you can keep your, your nerves together when, when it's time, it's 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 just butter from there it it really is that's i and if people want to know like i'm sure everyone has that or any any driver has that internal question or questioning themselves when they're like what's the difference between me and one of them yeah that right there that that at that moment when you pull up and you initiate and you glance over and you realize all right bud all eyes are on you. Mm-hmm. You know, let's see it. This is the time, do or die. Yeah. And that that takes a lot, you know, and, and kudos to every driver that goes, you know what I mean, that goes out there and does it because you're right, it is nerve wracking because it's not just like, oh, can I do it? Nah, man, they're thinking about the driving. They're thinking about how much money is being spent. They're thinking about the crew. You don't know what's going on in these per- in this person's mind. They're like, oh, dude, I, my spotter or my crew just told me that 
yo, be a little easy. Like your axle may just go, Yeah, you know, like all of this stuff, you know, you don't know, you just get to see the entertainment side of it. So it's, there's, oh man, there's just so many layers to it, you know? And I think, again, that's, an, I think that's what makes the sport so amazing. I think that's what's allowed the sport to grow so much because once you peel one layer off and you think you understood drifting, there, there's, there's a couple more to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think that's a, a really good way of putting it that, and you know, I, I, in the last year and, and obviously like, you know, this year coming up, like I've been in a spot of going from that hyper fan who was able to get like three to four layers down. Right. And then, you know, working with some teams, you can go a couple more layers down. And now it's like at a point where I, I mean, I have this almost unfeathered access to, to whatever I need to get to and whatever information I need. And it's like, I'm still digging, I'm still going deeper and like, I'm still finding more stuff, whether it's through interviews or, I mean, the majority of it's just, just shooting the shit with the drivers, just non-official hanging out in the pits. You know, you stop in, say hi, and then you really find out what the week, what's actually happening. Cause there's stuff that they're just not going to say in an interview or on a live stream or whatever, or in a video. And then you're like, Oh, like that's what's going on. I, I mean, a great example I think was, and, and Matt said it, so I don't mind saying it was uh, Matt in Seattle where he's like, I blew a belt every single run. He's like, every run I've done today, the, the, the supercharger belt came off. So in the last two corners, I was down, you know, whatever, three, 400 horsepower. He goes, and it's like this track, it's not that big of a deal. It's still a huge deal. He goes, but I have no confidence in, in what I need to do now. And, and you can either utilize that as a tool and be like, cool, I'm screwed anyways. You might as well just send it. Or you can use it as, a, as you know, something that's going to be a detriment to your program and get caught up in, in your own head. And I, I do think that is a massive thing that the younger drivers need to learn is like, you have to separate yourself from the situation and just drive the, just drive the car. Absolutely. If you're really trying to take this series, like you, building the car and being ready to drift is one thing, but understanding that like, bro, you can't do this by yourself. Yeah. You need a good team. You need a good spotter. You need someone who's going to drive to all these events so you don't have to go take these over. Even though I know a lot, a lot of good drive. Like, I know Travis Reader drives all the time. Mm. You know what I mean? I, you know, I know all of them do. Yeah, you know, but it's like that. That stuff helps. Yeah, that stuff helps when you can just show up and just suit up and go. Um, again, I was privy to it because I got to see Adam, James, Chelsea, and Vaughn do it. Um. But I think the, those little things that people don't know about, people are like, oh, well, RTR has this and that and the technology and parts. And first of all, you guys weren't there. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. And it's, it's uh, you know, that information is up to them if they ever decide to disclose that. But it's like, there's a lot going on there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's three cars. You know what I mean? Like, that is a well oiled machine. But it, there's just a lot going on that I just, I think that's the magic about it. It's the mystery that since you don't know what's going on, that's what brings you back. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you have to be prepared. You have to have a crew. You have to have a good, clean organization. You need to be organized. You know, I love what you said about how you should go get these, uh, you should go get your hotel rooms ahead of time and just cancel it or something like that. I think you yeah. said before. You know, little things, and I'm sure they're like, oh man, I should do that. But those are the little things that you really need to start thinking about. Because after you're done all of that, then comes the drive. Yeah. And if you don't, you don't have everything ready to roll, you're going to be done driving after like 10 laps. If, you know, stuff doesn't go right for you. You know, I mean, like, let's say you don't get to do it. Let's say you're in pro or you're well, in pro spec. You can do as many as you want. You know what I mean? At last, yeah. you know what I mean? But I mean, like you may be over after you like your first attempt at qualifying because you just didn't have the mindset where it needed to be. And honestly, man, there's just too much money on the line for you not to give yourself the best opportunity to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look, I wouldn't say that I'm cheap, but I do like saving money. And one of the ways that I save money is by developing an entire podcast so I can go to FD events for free. But if you don't do that, what you can do is use FDE podcast at checkout, a little coupon code section area, FD podcast, and save yourself a couple of bucks on tickets. So if you're coming out to an event, you might as well save some money. You already listened to the show. A couple extra, you know, typey typeys, save you a couple bucks. Why not? Cool. Uh, man, what else? Like, what else can we get into? So like, I want to, I want to understand really like what your, I guess like what your mindset is going into like judging in general. Like I, I know 
I think a lot, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of the expectation right now is like, you're going to go in and like fuck shit up. And like, it, but like knowing, I was going to say, knowing you the way I know you, I, I know that's not the case, but I am curious, like what you think you may do that may be different to, to either what was already going on or what, you know, people may be expecting. Um, my whole mindset of going in there is I know I've been trained. I know I have the experience. I've had someone, you know, above me, um, Brian, who's helped me so much with it. And it's really to just be the extra pair of eyes that are there. And if I see something that maybe someone missed, you know, you speak up, you say something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That's our job as, as judges has always been to be as a, be unbiased and focus and just do what you got to do there. So I, again, I appreciate that people are like, Oh, you're going to go in there and blah, blah, blah. But I, I think what people, what people don't understand again, that's that there's a difference between program or those type of competitions outside of formula drift and FD and the skill level sometimes isn't the level isn't as there, you know? So it may seem like I'm being harder on some of these people at these other events, but it's because there's more mistakes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it may look like I'm being harder on you. It may look like I'm a person that's hard and I'm strict, but it's because I see more mistakes happen at these competitions. In Formula Drift, the mistakes are not as obvious. Some, some are, but we're talking the highest level of drifting. These guys are really good. So my job is to just be right there, contribute with all the knowledge that I do have and make sure I support the judges uh, the best way possible with good, honest decisions. You know what I mean? So there is, and and I think that's what Lantin was doing. I think that's what Yule was doing. I think that's what every judge that's ever been there has done. You know what I mean? And I think that's exactly what they need. Obviously, I have my own personal take on some things. And if I just don't agree with something, I'm, you know, I'm just going to say, I don't agree with that. Yeah. That's why you have three judges, you know, Brian may agree with one thing, me another, and then Vernon or Nishida may think something different. And then it's either a one more time or it's two against one. I, I think sometimes people think that we all have to agree to make a call. I, obviously that's not the case. I don't know if everybody knows that. And I know that to us, that's very basic, but I mean, I, I have heard people think, well, not everybody agreed. I'm like, well, yeah, no, yeah of course not. That's why you have three judges, yeah, you know, why we get split decisions. Of, like that's, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, so, so that's what I'm going to bring to the table is just the clarity and then just really get a good understanding and be able to convey as clearly as possible what I want the drivers to do. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm ultimately there for the drivers. Yeah. I'm there to do a job make sure these drivers get the information that they need in the driver's meeting. Everything is clear. Everything is so they know what they need to do to perform. And I hope that with everything that we're doing this year, um, the fans are going to be able to get a little bit more clarity on that. And we'll do our best to just kind of explain things as much as possible. I think Ryan's done a great job in the past when it came to explanations. Obviously, I'm sure there's a time thing like scheduling and broadcasting or whatever. I'm, that's a reality, I'm assuming. You know what I mean? I don't know. But I, I think that stuff plays a role. And I think that's what people don't know. But as for me, it, it's just another day in the office. <clears throat> you know, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to see the best drivers in the world compete. And I'm going to give my honest judgment call on it and keep it moving from there. You know, I think I think because the I, I owe it to them. I, yeah. These these are the the best drivers in the world. I, I owe it to them to do that. You know, well, I think it's interesting too, because like you were up here for, you know, for the last while, I mean, for, for really a long time. And I, I think just being a bit closer to those drivers and having it being so fresh, uh, I, I, I think that's where maybe people's excitement and trust is coming from. Right. The, yeah, the general yeah. Yeah. consensus that that I got and, and feeling I got previously is people felt like the judges were disconnected because you'd, you'd hear comments or read comments of people saying like, oh, well, you know, you know, Robbie drove like Robbie, Robbie drove recently. So like he knows. And it's like, yeah, that definitely does help. Like that does provide some insight and and can definitely give you a, a, a certain perspective on how to judge somebody. But I don't know if that necessarily trumps somebody who has just stared at drifting for, for hundreds of hours. Right. And, and I, I think 
why people are, are so excited about you is just because you're the most relatable judge we've, we've had in a bit. Right. And, and yeah, recently that, relatable. Yeah. 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 I can, I can see that. Uh, I can see where that's coming from. I'm, I'm a lot of the people that are speaking. Cause I, I clicked and I looked on a couple people pages to see what, what type of demographic is this? Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're coming from my generation. So it's someone they know. Yeah. It's someone that they've seen in wherever I've traveled to. So I get the excitement. I'm, tr- I'm making sure I don't really feed into the excitement mm. because you're not going to like me. <laughs> you know? It's going like, to happen. Just not, I know. You're not, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're, you're, there's going to be a call and you're going to be like, ah, Reese, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and I know that's coming and whatever, you know what I mean? Like, this is my job, mm. you know what I mean? And I, I'm sure all the other judges have the same kind of attitude with it. Like, look, this is what I'm doing. We all know what we signed up for. I think I saw one of the people say, uh, my condolences. I saw that. Uh, I was like, was you it know? Dan Savage? Was that Brock? It was, yeah, yeah it was no, Brock. Yeah. Brock yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause he's been a judge. He knows, Yeah, you know what I mean? He knows what, he knows uh, what's so, up. He knows the deal, you know. I mean, he's he was he was under the uh, under fire for judging when he was. Uh, I think it was one of the events he was doing or something like that. Yeah. So he knows the deal. We all know. I, I just think that I think honestly, maybe because I'm so relatable, I'm going to get a little bit of a, a little bit of a pass here and there. But like I said earlier, I hope that because my relatability is there, most of the people maybe like think twice about what they say and be like, all right, well, why is it this way? You know, why did this call happen? Mm -hmm. You know, there has to be a reason, you know what I mean? And I've had a lot of people didn't agree with calls in the past and stuff like that. And you've had like many arguments and stuff, but again, that's, it's, it's a sport that's subjective. Those type of arguments and, and playful bantering is what you need. Maybe the internet takes it too far, but at the end of the day, uh, any publicity is good publicity. So. Do you, do you think you'll continue to do like drift breakdowns like after an event with judging, like to, to like provide clarity or, or any of that? Like, do you have any plans on, on kind of utilizing this? Like, I don't, I don't want to say like you're, you're a judge and now you're going to like try and use that spotlight, but like you and I've talked a lot about informing people. So right. that, I guess, like given this opportunity now, uh, how do you use that to then help inform people? I think in reality, being on the grand stage, I represent Formula Drift. Yeah. I represent the people that put me in that position. Um, I have to take that into account. So I think when the season starts, it, it is something me and Russo have talked about. Like, how do I go about doing this? Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Because it could be either a good thing or it could be a bad thing. Right. You know what I mean? And. I would never want to bring any type of negativity, at least from my behalf, to the organization or anything like that. So I think I'm going to try to very lightly and kind of see how that plays out. Because again, you know, the general fan and people are always just going to be who they are. They're going to have their opinion. I respect that. You know what I mean? But I think you just have to be, you have to be a little bit more agile and be kind of adaptive to what the room is, is kind of, you know, kind of read the room a little bit yeah. and then kind of make informative calls. I mean, I think I, I think a lot of people know how I am personality wise. I think you can see that when I get on the mic, I, I have a very much customer service voice <laughs> that I kind of take upon um, in person. I'm very much Philadelphian, <laughs> very colorful. Um, but there is a time and a place for that. And there is a, definitely a time and a place for professionalism. And I'm not being hired to bring, this crazy personality or attitude um that, you know i'm being hired so i can bring my skill set to the table right and be like listen we need to get this we need to get this going you know what i mean so that's kind of how i kind of view that yeah i i think it's good to have a bit of that that separation as well and i mean it's it's similar to like you know on my end like work me versus non-work me two very different right. people right like i mean i'm in meetings right. some days 10 hours straight and that is a very different person because I have to be than the guy I am on the mic or, or hanging out in the, in the pits or whatever. Like, I think we're all like that right. really. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You know what I mean? It's, 
I think that's that is the case, you know, and I think that just that's what comes with the platform. That's what comes with what we do. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's it's exciting all around. I think the the biggest hurdle for me is that I do know a lot of the drivers. Yeah, and I saw Nishida say this in in another podcast uh, earlier. Uh, you know, because I wanted to see what his perspective was on things as well. Um, he has to separate himself from a lot of the teams and maybe not go into the pits and be as friendly with them. Not because it's a bad thing, not because people in the organization or the teams are going to think it's a bad thing, because we all know we're all we're going to be unbiased. But from the outside, you don't want it to look you don't want to give even the inkling of a chance like, oh, there's favoritism or anything like that. Right. And I think that's part of it. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, that's going to be the hardest part, because I'm going to want to say hi to some of my friends. Like, hey, what's going on, man? Blah, blah, blah. But I don't want anyone, to, anyone, anybody to kind of take that out of context or anything like that. You know, I'm just... I was a fan first for years and years. I, I paid the 50, 40, whatever it was to go watch Formula Drift, sat in the stands, barbecued myself at Wall Speedway for countless years. Then I went to become part of the crew. And then after a crew eventually became a spotter, went so I, I get it. You know what I mean? But it's just, it's just a lot there. Yeah. It can very quickly be taken out of context where it's like, Oh, Reese, you know, like he was, he was standing in this person's pit for like 20 minutes and then he gave them a win in a battle. And it's like, you just, you can't put yourself in that situation where it could even be misconstrued. Right. Like I, I, I'm happy that you, you're, you're saying that. Cause I think that also just shows like how serious you're taking the whole thing that like, it's, it's yeah, very yeah. easy to be like given this role and just be like, cool, I guess I'm a judge now, but it, it sounds like you have very much thought out the repercussion of every action that you might take. Like not even that you will, but that yeah, like yeah. could happen. Yeah. And it, and it, and, and I know it may come as a shock for some people or maybe a relief for some people. Um, I, I want to be the other way, but it's like, that's not, that's for the grassroots. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's for that. I mean, that attitude will always be there and that way of thinking will be there. But again, like I have to focus on what I'm doing and I, you know, I'm just listening to my superior, you know, or the person who came before me, Robin Ashid. I'm like, you know what? That's a good idea. Like I can always hang out with these dudes another time. You know what I mean? Where it's not going to be viewed a certain way. Yeah. Uh, you know, you just have to take in consideration what you're doing there. And I think everyone that kind of does that, you know, I, mean? I remember before when I first started judging normal events, um, Brian Egger was like, what? you know, after a while, you're going to learn to like kind of Irish goodbye it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I'm like, ah, you know, whatever. And I learned very quickly that, uh, that unfortunately for some events, you do your job and then you just get out of there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes I stick back. I, I give the driver the respect he needs and I speak to him and I calm him down because I was in that position before. So I get it. You know what I mean? But you can't do that with everyone, you know? So sometimes you have to know when to pick and choose your battles and when to pick and choose to try to sympathize uh, with someone. So uh, again, everything that I'm kind of going about, it just comes off of what the judges have done before me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I mean, I think that's, it's a fear, it's a fear that, <clears throat> that I had and still in some <laughs> regards have, uh, which is like, I don't want to become jaded by this thing that I love so much, right? I don't ever mm -hmm. want this to feel like I have to do it or it's a job or whatever. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, the the podcast schedule is, it's a lot. To try and produce one episode a week, I mean, for anybody listening, it's it's about eight total man hours. Not all those are mine. There's an editor, there's an audio engineer that takes care of it. But like, I don't ever want to get to a point where I'm like, oh, I got to put out an episode, right? And there's been weeks where I'm like, okay, you know, like even, even this episode, like full transparency, I leave for vacation in 12 hours and I'm like, you and I talked, but I'm like, no, I want to do this. Like you and I yeah. were like pushing each other to see how early we could do this episode. Yeah, And yeah, I yeah. never want that to go away. Like I, I don't, I haven't had an episode yet where I'm like, oh, I got to talk to this person. Like I'm genuinely right. excited. And I think the day that that stops is the day that like I have to stop. Right. And it, it yeah. sounds like, you, you know, you, you kind of have the same thing where you're like, you know, there's parts of this that are going to be work, but when you're on the plane home, you know, or what, whatever, it's, it's that moment of like, you know what? That was fun. I did a good job. I had a good time and I'm excited to go back again. 
Uh, absolutely. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I mean, I, I try to make sure I never complain because I get to enjoy drifting in a very unique way yeah. that I know many people don't get to do. I get to travel. I get to instruct. I have a sponsor that had a car built for me. That's like gnarly as anything that I get to just thrash on. Like, and I don't even got to do FD. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and it's, it's just so many good things have happened to me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, meeting Ed Thompson, the, the owner of uh, cool cat motorsports. Um, he's taught me so many things cause he, he comes from racing car, uh, racing boats and stuff like that. Having, finding mentors and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So sitting down with him was, was really important to see all that and have all those opportunities that he's given to me and then be able to go with Chelsea to do all these crazy things, um, overseas and stuff like that. And, or even the opportunity to judge in Brazil, that was such an eye opener for me when I went to Brazil. Because I don't know if you know what soccer, you know, stadiums look like when they're like, oh, la, yeah, la, 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 la. yo, that's how the fans were in Brazil. Really? Bro. Damn. I'm like, this is way better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, well, like, this is, we don't get that in the United yeah, States. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know like, I mean? people, people get upset, like, oh, the, Bra- <laughs> oh, here we go. Like, all the Brazilian <laughs> flags in the chat. And it's like, why are you mad? Just do better. Bro, it was, just be more excited. It was, <laughs> It was so it was so cool to go and see the enthusiasm that everyone had out there. And as soon as the event was over, all the fans stayed, and it was a big celebration. And everyone started cooking barbecue because that's what they do. And like that's it was it was such a different event, you know what I mean? Same like when me and you went to Canada. Yeah, you know it was it blew my mind away. So I, I'm again that. I think me and you were privy to see how the evolution is happening on a show scale mm-hmm. a little bit more. So it's, it's just, I can go on and on about it. It's just so, so cool. Everything that's happening everywhere. Yeah. You know, I, I wish I could multiply myself and just go. Dude. I, I, yeah, I'm the same way where it's like, I have, I mean, I don't know how many days I'm gone this year, 90 days or something like that. And I'm like, I still don't feel like I'm doing enough or absorbing enough. And like, you know, trying to keep up on, on drifting news and, and like our sports big, but in the grand scheme of sport, it's not that big. Like it's, no, no, it's no. really not. It's and not. I still feel like even if I dedicated every waking moment, if for whatever reason I had the opportunity to quit my day job completely and just focus in on drifting, I still don't think I'd be able to absorb enough information. Like it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot now. <laughs> I'm always learning. I'm always, you know, I, I, I'm always learning new things. I always love talking to drivers to get their perspective. I love teaching because being an instructor, it's a two way street. You teach someone young how to do something like this. And then what's going to happen later on down the line, they're going to get really good. And then they're going to drive with you again. And then they're going to show you something, yeah, a different way of doing something. You're going to be like, Oh, that's, and then they teach you that. And that's how the evolution happens. Mm -hmm. So like, Everyone's like, oh, it's so cool that you're teaching people. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of selfish of me though, because what I'm really waiting for is to see these guys come back and me collect on, you know, my investment. Yeah. But, you know, like, but that's that's it. You know, it's 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 there's just so much out there. It's just I don't I we are jaded, you know, very much. I know I am. I think everyone knows what drifting is. Yeah. Because everyone I talk to every day is about drifting. You know what I mean? But I know that's not the case. It's yeah. It's it's so. It's so interesting too, like in, in everyday life, like, I, I mean, I work in motorsports, but like an example, like I, I, you know, obviously playing hockey, I, I have groups that I play with and they're like, oh, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, oh, I work in, you know, racing. And that's just kind of how I leave it. And they're like, oh, in this series or that series. And I'm like, I could probably let them guess for an hour and they still wouldn't pick formula drift. Um, I know. which is part of me is like kind of excited about that. Because now I'm given an opportunity to be like, no, I, I work in this. And they're like, well, what the hell is that? And I'm like, oh, let me show you. And then, you know, I'll pull up, you know, there's like a couple of clips that I always like default to to show them. And they're like, oh, this is wild. And I'm like, where can I watch this? I'm like, it's free on YouTube, man. Like, that's it. Like, I'll you, give me your number. I'll text you the dates. Like, I will, let, I will, inv- I will get you hooked. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do is, is just get somebody who yeah. has no idea what the hell this is and, and see them get hooked. 
converting people is a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I would have to say there isn't been one time attack dude or one drag racing dude or you name the dis stunt driver. Yeah. Anything that has come to my school, I would say at least 95% of them make the switch. Yeah. They're like, this is way better. They don't want to admit it in the beginning. No. Because they're like, no. no. They got that pride in them. Yeah. But then comes that message. They'll send me a text message like, yo, Reese, I've been kind of looking at this car, Facebook Marketplace, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, ah, here it goes. You know, and it's, dude, it it happens every time. And the reason it happens isn't because of the competition, isn't because of all of that. It's because of the community. Mm. They go to these events and it's like, everyone's a family. Everyone's this, everyone's that. That's what draws people in is the camaraderie and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And um, that's something that I learned from Club Loose a lot was you really do feel like you're in like a brotherhood, you know, yeah. you know, with everyone. It's a family, you know what I mean? And um, I think that's what attracts people when it comes down to it. Same reason people did BMX and skateboarding. I mean, the examples are endless, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, but that, that's ultimately what it is. I have a lot of people that come over from different disciplines. And as soon as they get the taste of it, because I'm giving them they rent a car for me and it's ready to go. Yeah. You know? And they're like, Oh, so I can just buy one of these and just set it up like this and I'm good to go. And I'm like, yep. For under 10 G's, you'd be ready to go for at least three years. If as long as you know how to do your maintenance and stuff, Yeah, you don't hit anything and, and no one hits you. And it's just, you know, fluids, expendables, and and I, tires. That's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. And some of these people have the money. So like, they're like, some of them will be like only 10 G's. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not saying you need to buy more because you're not at the skill level yet. Why do you need yeah. all that? You know what I mean? And a lot of people just go with that, you know, either a Z or a BMW right now. A lot of Mustangs are starting to come up. Yeah. Now. So it's, I, I get to see it because I see students come all year long up until like this month. Cause it's snowing. Yeah. and you see the trend, you see what's happening. And it's for anyone that tells me, Oh, it's dying. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like I got stunt drivers, I have secret service people that have come here before cool. military. People. I've had everything. I've had grandmoms, women, like the kids. I mean, like you name it. It's just people like it. Yeah. They, they just think it, who, who doesn't want to go sideways and burn rubber? Let's be honest. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? It's like, like the coolest part of, I mean, I've, I've always said it's the most difficult, but it's also the coolest part of every motorsport. Yeah. Yeah. I even had takeover kids show up. That's And they're like, you know what? Good. They're like, yeah, they show up. I, I was kind of like, uh, um, but they were very humbled about it. And they were just like, listen, I just, I know there's a rhyme or reason why you guys do what you do. Mm-hmm. I want to know, is it vastly that different? And they told me straight up, we're not going to stop doing what we're doing. <laughs> That's not happening. Yeah. And they were, at least they were honest with me. Yeah. But they're like, can you show us? And I showed them that like, we are vastly better. You know what I mean? But it was cool to see them. One, be straight up with me because I value people that are straight up with mm-hmm. me. Um, they told me they wanted to test it out. They had a hard time, a lot of them. But I will say there was two people that really impressed me. Yeah, You know what I mean? And I was like, man, if you were to focus on doing this legitly, you know, you could probably do something with that Hellcat. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But but, you know, I, I'm in a position where I get to see everything, mm-hmm. you know, and I've seen from you know, the stunt drivers. And I, I think we've even instructed, uh, one of the drivers from EMSA hmm. and, uh, he picked it up quick, like in two hours, not at, not at my school. He, we were actually in Saudi Arabia when that happened <laughs> and we put him in a Mustang and he picked it up really quick. Um, cause we were doing a, a clinic out there with RTR. Um, so it was, it's really cool to see how many people are into it and how many people unknowingly convert themselves. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. They get like a little, especially with some, yeah, they get a little sip of the Kool-Aid and that's it. Yeah. Just, there's that and RC drifters. Like, yeah, there's just, there's just so many avenues, you know, it's, it's the reblocks. I didn't even know it was a thing, you know what I yeah. mean? Until these kids chewed me off, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's always, I, I always enjoy hearing like how kind of standard this story is like across the board, like it's, it's such a, a definitive thing in this sport in particular, where it's like, no, like you, you get somebody hooked a little bit and it just takes over. And for some people, it, it means that they're driving. And for some people, it just means they're watching like crazy. Like it just, it just depends on what they're able to commit to. But there's very few people that I've introduced to the sport that don't have some attachment to it still. And it just ranges, right? 
Uh, I talked about it before, like my cousin, yeah. I took my cousin drifting once do talked like doesn't, he's not in a spot where he could be building cars and stuff, but he goes to tracks without me all the time and goes and watch drifting, just him and his family. It, that's it. They just want to be part of the community, hang out, check out the cars and watch people go sideways. And, and I, I would argue to say that there's probably more of those type of people than there is drifters. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, that's the important takeaway from it all that we've gotten to the point where there's a lot more of just people that genuinely just like to come to the events and enjoy them. Mm -hmm. You know, moms, grandmas, grandfathers that, I mean, there's kids that are growing up only coming to drifting events. That's like stonebacks. Like there's so many kids that I just see and I'm like, man, I've known you since you were a baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. And all they know when it comes to cars is drifting. Is drifting. Yeah. So it's like, imagine where they're going to be. I get now. Now the only bad thing in that situation is they're going to be jaded totally in a different way than we will be. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I look at like, you know, Stoneback's kids. That's a great example, right? Like that's a, you know, that like you're, you're Jeff Stoneback's child. Like, yeah, wait, it's pretty what are you going to do? Like, that's definitely must have got her cool points at school. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, so I mean, you, you look <laughs> yeah. at like you know Vaughn's kids. Like that's a similar, a similar thing. Like we're we're seeing that. I mean, uh, I mean, just referencing back to like my ten year old. Like that's that's what he knows. Like when he knows racing, he knows drifting and F one, and that's it. Like you ask him favorite cars, and he will list off more drift cars than he will you know ridiculous hyper cars, right? And I think that is. Like when I have fathers or, or parents tell me like, what can I do for my kid to help them? Mm. Just, it doesn't have to be drifting. I tell them, look, it doesn't have to be drifting. I'm going to tell you drifting. Cause this is what I do, yeah. but introduce them to something early on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my first love was basketball. Okay. I, I really thought I was going to play basketball until I realized I wasn't getting any taller than five, eight. <laughs> um, but I loved it. I loved everything about it. I loved I love the attitude. I love the trash talking. I loved how you had to earn your right to be on the basketball court in Philadelphia and because you were going to neighborhoods that you had no business going to back <laughs> then. You know what yeah. I mean? So like when drifting happened, I'm like, I don't have to do any of that stuff. You know, the trash talking comes here and there. Mm. But I think what I enjoyed about drifting is that playing street ball, when you would do a move or you would do something to make someone look bad. <laughs> The fans would all ah, and stuff like that, kind of like the N one mixtape tours and stuff right. like that they used to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when you do it in drifting, you get the same dopamine hit, basically. Yeah. Because you're just out there doing it, and if you do a good job, you know, like th- there isn't a driver alive that's going to tell me when you're on that perfect line, you're not, you're not wondering like everyone knows I just killed that. Yeah. Like we're all thinking that. Yeah. Like, come on. Let's put, come on. Yeah. You nail that transition. You, know I mean? you door somebody for like an entire zone, like whatever. Like it's, yeah. it's noticed. I mean, the fans, the fans yeah. get crazy. Like it's, you know? yeah. Yeah. And that's what brings people back. That, that thing right there. That's, that's what drifting. That's how, that's how you get reeled into drifting. Yeah. It's that right there. It's those little, those little victories. Right. And you, you get a little taste of that victory. And then that, that victory becomes your standard, becomes your every day. Right. It becomes your every time driving. So then you got to reach for like that next hit. Right. If you, you know, you, you drift for the first time. Cool. You get it. And then it's like, cool. Now it's like, oh, I did a figure eight or, oh, I linked a corner. I'd linked the whole track. And then it's, oh man, I was like, you know, driving with a guy. And then that evolves to I'm driving on this guy's door for an entire lap. And then next thing you know, it's yeah, I'm, you know, three fifteen tires streets of long beach, best in the world. And I'm doing the same thing again. And like, it, 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 it's small victories because you're going from doing all those basic fundamental things. Yeah. And then when you get on the highest platform that there is in drifting, you know, you're going against other people that are trying to do, or these drivers are going against other drivers that are trying to do the same thing. So when they are able to adapt to someone that drives a certain way or their power band comes in a certain place, there's a lot of variables that's going on right. with who you're going against. You know what I mean? You have to drive maybe a little bit different depending who you're going to go against. And so it like, those are the things that it's just really impressive when you see people do that. And when they're able to adapt to multiple drivers, those are the small victories for those drivers that keep them coming back. Yeah. Cause they're like, damn, I can, 
I can go against anyone right now. You know, you can see when some when a driver gets on fire, like Olsen, like Olsen, when he gets hot, like no uh, stopping him. Yeah. Odie. Yeah. <sighs> well, even even Chelsea, yeah. right? Like you can you can you could tell in practice or in qualifying, like when that boy is going to be on a heater. You just see it. Yeah. As long as yeah. everything no. like mechanically, I mean, and even still, like yeah. mechanically, like that dude, what it I mean in Irwindale, like he was down what, 400 horsepower without nitrous? And he still looked good. Like, it was still a dirty run. <laughs> it was it was impressive. I was more impressed. Obviously, people wouldn't know this, but I was more impressed on his attitude. Yeah. I think he kind of, like, he just kind of, like, this is it, dude. This is my last run. I'm not going to be sour-faced about it because I don't have nitrous. I'm just going to go do Chelsea. And he just had a very good attitude. He's like, whatever. And he sent it. He went and did it doored him on the way out it was just uh that's that's the way he wanted to go you know what i mean like but like what i think is so cool and i i just i don't know how many people realize it is like the way he went out is the way he came in like down on power (laughs) shit's broken i don't give a shit i'm still here i'm still gonna run it like i know i i know that i'm i'm gonna get beat but i'm not gonna tell myself that and like still put on a show no matter what. And I think that's like that run epitomized everything Chelsea Denofa in like 45 seconds. Like, yeah, that was, that's him to the uh, it's, it's, it was, you know. As much as I, I, I think it would have been super cool to like see him go out on the, on the box and all that stuff. There is something very poetic about him having a broken car that was 300 horsepower less than the guy he was driving against. Like, but still somehow made it one of the most exciting runs of the entire weekend. And like, ah, yeah. like, ah, it just, it gets me so pumped thinking about it. I'm so, hey, hey, dude, uh, and I didn't realize like it. And again, something like no one would know. Yeah. After, after early on in the season, when I came in in Orlando, cause he had a different spotter for the first two rounds. And then he hit me up and was like, yeah, I need you to come in from that day. When he won in Orlando, he was like, bro, his confidence was through the roof. Yeah. Right. And he was like, bro, I want to do so good this year that I technically don't even have to go compete in Orlando Orlando. Yeah. And he's and technically he could have technically yeah, he, he didn't have yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of joked around with him, like you kind of predicted it, you know, and you never know. Maybe he spoke it into fruition or whatever, but he was he was on kill mode the entire time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. for sure. But I will say I, I I will give credit to a lot of the other drivers. One person specifically that anytime I would see the bracket, I'm like, as long as I don't, as long as we don't go against this guy, I feel more comfortable was um, Kazuya. Mm, Interesting. Because the reason is because the RTR cars, again, this is going to get a little deep and a little bit more up there, but you can, you can see the movements. You can see when Chelsea's going to do something when he's loading up and he's about to do the transition and, you don't see that with Kazuya's FRS. Car is so flat. Yeah, or the GT86. Yeah. You, you don't, you don't. So because, and I don't know, it's it, they're two different chassis, but there's a fluidity that he carries through turns that, in my opinion, worked against what we were doing, mm. and and especially going from the transition from outer zone one into outer zone two, where we had that hit in in, in Orlando. But had he timed that right, yeah, he would have been all over, all over us. You know what I mean? So there was a, a, other drivers that don't don't come to the mind at the moment. But Kazuya was definitely someone that every time I saw him, I'm like, bro, like I know we can beat him, but like I'd rather not have to go against <laughs> that dude right now. You know what I mean? Like I would never really tell Chelsea that. I mean, these are just things that I was thinking because yeah. I'm watching everyone. Um, but there was a couple of them, but that was one for sure where I was like, yeah, I'd rather not have to deal with that. Dude. And what's interesting is like you know? to a casual fan, they never would have guessed that, right? Like to a, to a general person who's like, oh, cause yeah, whatever he's ranked, like he's not like a top five guy. And it's like, right. it's not about being a top five driver. It is the way you drive, the style you drive. And they're, they're so different. Like I, I wish there was a, a really good way to like blank out a car <laughs> and like have a video run of that car without sound. And you couldn't tell what the car was and, and, and just see if people could tell you who that driver was. Cause like, I think 
for myself, I'd probably get it better. Like I, let's say 60, 70%. I think for guys like you, it'd be like 80 to 90% where you like, you could just see like a car mm-hmm. transition. But, oh yeah, I know exactly who that is. Like I could, it's, it's just, it's so difficult to like still understand how the car is moving without being able to recognize what the car is. So yeah, mm-hmm. but and that, that's just stuff when you get really invested into the sport and you understand uh, you know, deeper layers, like that's when that stuff comes out. Like yeah. uh, our strategy, when we went against Osbo in Orlando was like, all right, Chelsea, I need you to do a killer run. Uh, he was leading. And the only kink in that armor was the initiation from Osbo. Mm. He was just, just one, one, the initiation line was just down a little bit. Everything else was perfect. Yeah. So those were one of this. That's one of those prime examples where we didn't really talk much. That I was like Chelsea, just do your run. I let me focus on Osmo and find out where he makes an error. And that was pretty much what. And, all right, cool. He goes out there. Chelsea gets back on. I'm like Chelsea, you have to make sure you get outer zone one and you initiate and place your car correctly and then murder everything else. Yeah. And he knows that means. Oh, I mean, I ideally you'd be like, oh, he messed up in two spots, but he didn't. Yeah. I only saw one, and it was small. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think at that track, the way Osbo's car settles, settled a little bit more balanced than Chelsea's car okay. was, was, was settling. So I was worried. I'm like, bro, you need to place this correctly and make sure your line is above where he did it because that's what they want. And luckily, we came out with the win. Mm. But again, those are little things that if you don't know, you don't see that little kink. I didn't tell him about any other thing. I saw <laughs> one little error and I was like, yo, we need this. Yeah. Everything else, you already know what you need to do. Yeah. You have no leeway. You know, and that was the one time that I was like 10 out of 10. Mm. You need you need to do Chelsea right yeah. now. You know, there wasn't many times I told him to do that. Yeah. But that was one time I was like, now's now's the time. Now now you need to do you. Yeah. You need to do what you vote. And and he did the thing, you know, and he did it. Really in a cool way, you know. Yeah, he did Chelsea. I mean, that's that's yeah, he's a Chelsea. It's I'm so torn about whether or not I want him to come back. Because part of me is like, I already I already miss him being not like just not being there. But I also don't want this legacy that we have now to change, right? And it's like you you see, you know, like fighters who go too long. And then you you have people like as weird as this sounds, like musicians that die young. And like I'm not, I don't want I'm this is not me wishing that Chelsea no one dies by any means. Oh, yeah. But like, you know, Kurt Cobain is so legendary because you always wonder what could have been. Whereas like Scott Stafford from Creed, you know, is like, okay, dude, <laughs> just just give it up, right? Whereas, like, <laughs> if he would have, like, done that album and then died, he would have been up here. But because he just pushed his career further and further and you got to see him be human, it takes something away. And that's kind of where I'm at with Chelsea, where it's like, you know, he 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 left the king. We never, the last impression is he was the best. And nothing is going to yeah, change yeah. that unless he comes back. Now, that being said, he comes back. I have no doubt in my mind the dude just crushes for like another couple of seasons and does the same thing again. But like similar, like look at like, like as weird as it sounds, look at James Dean back to back to back, right? Comes back. He's in a Mustang now, doesn't dominate. That changes the perspective of James Dean. He looks human now, which is a whole other level of awesome because you're like, oh, he's not perfect. Like people can beat him. Like, it this is and it's yeah. and it I mean it only took like <laughs> kicking his butt into the wall. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But like I mean he's I and I get people say, Oh, you know, James Dean is human. Yeah. But I, I look at it a different way. I look at it like this dude left, comes back, jumps in a car, and slowly makes adjustments on his first year. And I believe it's fifth overall. Yeah. Like that's a win in my book. Oh, you know what I mean? One hundred percent. Yes. For the fans, for like I tell the fan, I'm like, yo, like, I don't know, I don't know who could do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe Peter will come back at some point, and then we'll be able to see them. But that that just 
first of all, like I'm I'm there watching James. Yeah. I wasn't spotting for him. I, I did put in my two cents anytime it was asked in 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 the, the drivers meeting at RTR and stuff like that when we would discuss and uh Adam as well too. Adam impressed me so much this year. I can't even tell you. His tire management was like through the roof. Mm. It was really impressive. And again, I'm privy to that data. Yeah. <laughs> James. <laughs> And and I I would tell Chelsea I'm like man everybody did good but Adam did really good today you know what I mean I'm very honest yeah. you know what I mean but James I saw him get better and better and there was a point in the season where I started I started looking at like uh the the other spotter that was next to me Hayden mm. right that was spotting for Adam um, and I'm like yo one more season. And like James is going to be a problem bro, yeah. in this car, you know what I mean? Now a lot of people are like, oh, you know, he, he it just shows blah blah blah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But next year, I don't think it's going to be. No, he's comfortable. It's going to be, you know. And they have such a good team over there. That kid Hayden that I'm talking about, this year he was the guy that took all the notes for us mm. on all the other drivers. That kid is so knowledgeable. He's so good at taking notes. He's so good. And I'm just saying that like they have a really good team over there. Mm. You know, it's just it's insane how how all of that is just gonna be like a, a, an extra part of James Dean's arsenal and whoever they end up having driving this year. Cause I don't really know. I mean, I kinda know, but I don't know. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I kinda know, but I, I don't I, know I, either. <laughs> yeah, no, I really don't know. Yeah. You know, but I mean I'm I think so, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I should just call me like, what's the deal? <laughs> you know, but I, <laughs> you know, but I, I kind of just want to wait, you know what I yeah. mean? Um, but James, James is just to see him get in a car that doesn't pivot the way he's normally used to pivoting S13s, mm-hmm. you know, to see him try to figure it out. That is impressive. That is impressive to do that. And one thing that really impressed me about James Dean we went out to dinner one night and I asked James, I'm like, James, have you had the opportunity? You know, why don't you just, would you bring back the S15? And this is the moment that I found the whole new respect for James. He said, paraphrasing, right? Yeah. He was like, I don't want to bring the S15 back because I already did it. Mm. Like, it's not a challenge anymore. Right. Why would I do that? I want to try to do it in the Mustang. Like, I want to show myself that I can do it. I don't want to do that. I know I can do it in the S15. You know, so imagine you're so good. <laughs> yeah. That you got to make it harder. <laughs> yeah. You know, and like, and obviously there's sponsorships and roles and reasons why you drive certain cars. We all know that. Like, we're, we, we, this is a business. But to see someone not take the easy way out just to, for the sake of winning, it just, it's very admirable for me. And that day I was like, man, like this, this dude's about it. You know, he's like, and I've known about James Dean since he was 18 years old. He was sponsored by Nexon Tires. I saw his first videos in Ireland. Yeah. When he first came on the team, I told him, like, I used to watch your brother, Mike Dean, and you compete back in oh, all, all that, yeah. all this stuff. And he was like, what? You watch my brother? And I, again, I'm a nerd, bro. Yeah. So like, when I had the opportunity to finally talk to someone that I've been watching for years and years, obviously I'm jaded because I'm around Chelsea and all these other people that when I finally got to meet james it was like ah, oh, it's just another driver yeah but it was cool to talk to him like yo i used to watch your brother yeah compete you know what i mean and he was like damn right he was like yeah you had the white s13 with the strawberry face nexon this that and back in that time you know what i mean and he was like wow it's cool so it's it's just really cool to see all of those people and now boom he's in a mustang mm-hmm. you know what i mean then you have adam you have all the drivers like Travis, everyone that's on there. Like I was just saying on the other one, I'm excited for uh, Jonathan uh, Cash's uh, XLR. This, yeah, like it's all of these things that are coming. On. It's just everything is just so. It's yeah. It's, I just I just wish people could enjoy it as much as I. You know what I mean? I just really yeah. It's it's <laughs> it's tough. Like I don't have a yeah. I don't have a crayon box that's eight colors. I have a crayon box that's sixty four. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have so much more to look at. It's just. I, I wish I could convey information better when it came to all that. It's just, it's so cool. It's, it is, it's very difficult to, un, like to, for, for a lot of people to understand the level of excitement that we can create because of a lot of the stuff that we know. And this isn't like, you know, behind the scenes knowledge. I mean, you and I definitely know stuff that if we said out loud right now, we would both lose our jobs. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> immediately, if it got published, I don't mean that like in a bad way. Just like you know, no, that's true, the industry's true. small, and we know some things that are going on, and you know, we don't want to spoil that for anybody. But what I guess, like, what I really mean though is like we know stuff about these cars and and how they operate and how the teams operate and the personalities and the the stories of like how shit got done. Like if people truly understood what it took to get James Dean's car back on track in Irwindale, I mean, you'd have to like, you, you'd throw up. The amount of work that that team put in is crazy. Like, and, and the unfortunate thing is like, it doesn't matter how you document it. It doesn't matter if you were to t- time lapse it or film it until you are standing next to those people who are some, like they look so exhausted and so tired, but not defeated. And they're just like, all we got to do is get it on track. Like, that's all we got to do. Like, it's just this thing. Like, there's no other way to appreciate that than to be there. And like, that, that's, like, that's just such a, a small part of, of the whole thing. And like, that's why our excitement is, is almost beyond words. Because like, I can't, I right. can't. There aren't, there's not enough words. There's not enough time for me to convey my level of excitement. Because every time I look at something else, when I look at the potential driver roster, like, you and I could sit here for three hours easily and run through that driver roster and just talk about how we excite, how excited we are for every single person on that driving roster. Absolutely. There isn't one, literally, there isn't one person. I don't, I may not know everyone personally, yeah. but at that professional stage, I do respect everyone's effort that they're putting yeah. in, no matter who they are. Like it's it's racing. Emotions get high. I understand that. But everyone on there puts 110%, no matter who they are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the amount of effort that you see get put into these cars when they get wrecked, you know, obviously this last year was more so RTR that was like, wow, I can't believe you guys can bring things. It was like Pet Cemetery over there. <laughs> like everything was coming back. You know what I mean? But big yeah. shout out to, to to Andy and Shelby that were on James D and everyone else on the RTR team because it wasn't just them, but those two were like Shelby and Andy throw down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they are really good at what the, everyone, everyone is. But it's also like I've been on other teams. I've been with Matt Kaufman. I've seen his team, you know, when he got his car back and they ran over the the, the stop, stop clock yeah, or something yeah, like that. You know what moment. I mean? And then and then you have uh, I was with uh, Alec Robbins when I've seen his car come back from the dead countless times because of his team. So I've seen, and I've seen multiple teams go and do this. You know what I mean? And and I think because me and you are privy to seeing some of this stuff in person after hours when all the fans have left, yeah. when you hear someone say this is rigged, <laughs> you're just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, sir, no, you are. Bro. No, <laughs> yeah, it's not, you know, there, there's, there's so many, like, yeah, I, there's so many stories that just unfortunately, like, don't get told or like people will never no. know about that. Like in, at the time are, are life altering, right? Like, yeah. like Rome trying to figure out his engine. Uh, where was it? I want to say it was New Jersey. Was it New Jersey? No, Utah. Where like, they had to like ship it. I, 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 I yeah, it's just like. Oh, I know I'll get the facts wrong, but it's like, there's so many of these stories of just like, tr- just to try and make it to the line. And then people are like, oh man, you only put down like an 86. It's like, shut up, shut up. Yeah. Like, don't. You don't know the side quests. No. You don't know what it took the last two months to get there. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Like no idea. Like it's like, but blow an engine up, do this. And do then that, at the same time, like I can't, I have to, <clears throat> to like calm myself down because I'm like, you couldn't know. You, there's no way you could know. And, and it's exactly. unfortunate. Like, I'm, I'm sad for you because you don't know. Like, th- that's right. it. Like, you, it's, I, I don't even know how, like, how to convey it. It's like when somebody shits on a book series or an, a music, a musician you love and like, like a musician you really connect with and someone makes fun of them, but you know, they don't know anything about the band. They haven't listened to every album. They haven't seen them in concert. They don't understand the struggles of the lead singer. They don't get any of that. They're just like, I just don't like that band. I'm mean, like I'm sad for yeah, you. taking it for face value. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm yeah. sad that you'll you don't get the appreciation that I get, and that's like how I've gotten through a lot of like some of like some of the negativity that I've I've seen around drifting or about drivers and stuff is like I have to stop and go like you know what you you just don't know and that's not your fault. Yeah, he's yeah. 
it, it's 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 a hard pill to swallow. It, it took me years yeah. to just really understand. Like, okay, well, yeah, like of course these people don't know. Of course and, this. Of course that. You know, what I mean? and like maybe you know selfishly, that's what motivates me so much to do this show. Is that like for a couple hours a week, I get to have the opportunity to help that driver, or that person, explain a fraction. A, a just a minuscule amount of what their life is actually like for people to absorb. And hopefully they connect with it and hopefully they become a bigger fan of that person or understand that that is ultimately my favorite set of comments with the Adam LZ one that just came out. You know, we, I put that out knowing it's going to do well. Adam's got a huge fan base, but what I did not think was going to happen is the amount of people that, that commented and said, I used to not like him. But you know what? He seems like a pretty cool guy or something of that story. That's that's happened with, with Matt Field. That's happened with Lontane. It's happened with so many people. Or I had no idea who this guy was, but now I'm a fan. That's that's the reason why I do it for those comments alone. Yeah, I, th- I think this platform does a really good job of that. Um, even myself, when I heard that I was going to go to RTR yeah. and that was my first time really dealing with Adam. And I'm from the old school. I, I know Adam's a YouTuber and all this, but it's like, at the end of the day, all I care about is like, well, can you drive? Yeah. I give a shit about and your then, follower count. Like, can you drive I, the car? I could care less. Yeah. yeah. It's impressive. It's, it was impressive when he was in the S15 and I would show up and there's a line of like 125 people waiting for him. Like, it was impressive. I was hat. like, damn kid, I give you that, you know, I'll give you that all day long. Like that is impressive. But to, to have the app, and again, not many people are going to be able to sit down with Adam and have these conversations about driving and, hey, what's your perspective on this? And I'm a product of that. Yeah. I went, sit down with him, and I'm like, man, this kid knows a lot more than I thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's me saying it. I'm being honest. I mean, I didn't know. Yeah. You know, and maybe, maybe years ago, I, I, I may have said something that wasn't aligned with like giving this kid a break. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, it's impressive to see he doesn't have to put the effort into this because he has many, he could do anything he wants, but this is what he's decided to do. Yeah. And it's, and the majority of my students between 13 and 16, who do they know? Adam, you know what I mean? And some of the things that they've seen in videos because of Adam or because what Adam has put up, is allowing this new generation to have uh, arguably a better idea of what they should be doing. Cause there is some good information. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that's in some of those things. So, so it's, it's really impressive. And I think, yeah, you're right. I think some people maybe just shortchanged them because it was the era of like the influencers coming in and, and all of that. But I think the proof is in the pudding. And I think we've seen that there's a lot of people that can get in front of a camera and do good and can get behind the wheel and do probably just as good yeah yeah no, that's fair <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that you know yeah. sick dude well we're like we, we i i look at i don't want to cut this off because <laughs> <laughs> like no i i mean i would I, I, I glanced up and i was like damn we've gone for almost two hours dude, I, I, you, know? you i i'm you and i uh years ago you were on my like you and i had a discussion on my old show and I, I have to check the time on that i know i i'm pretty sure it was well north of two hours too so i kind of knew coming yeah. into this i like told my wife i'm like i'm i'm gonna be a minute just hang tight. Like this is not going to be one of those yeah, I, minute an hour. I love 20s. drifting too much. Yeah. Yeah. I love drifting too much to where like, uh, it's like I said, I'm jaded. I'm around it all the time. Yeah. I live a very unique life with drifting. So to me, drifting's on my mind 24 hours a day. So I'm just really honored to have the opportunity and voice my opinion wholeheartedly. And, um, and I'm just excited for the opportunity to to be up there and be a part of the FT family and be a gray shirt, like we say. Yeah, be a gray like, shirt. I'm, I'm an official gray shirt now, you know what I mean? So uh, really, really pumped for the opportunity. And, and, and thank you to everyone out there who was involved in that decision and, you know, yourself and anybody else that put in a good word for me. Uh, truly, I appreciate that. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm so pumped to, like, hang out with you more. And, like, like you know, just, like, you know, whether it's, like, the, the lunches or whatever, because I know... That's those discussions are are so productive, and I think it's it's been talked about the show before. Like people don't realize that like at FD, it's just almost all talking about drifting, and it's almost all talking about how do we make this better, how do we make it bigger, how do we make it cooler, 
Like, how do we just make it more? And uh, I'm excited for you to be able to provide some insight to that group as well. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just pumped, man. I'm just pumped for the season. Every day that goes by, it's like a little tick off the calendar for, for Long Beach. And yeah, I'm, I know uh, I'm excited. I'm so pumped. Are you going to be there for super drift? Too? I don't know yet. I, I don't, I, I don't have that part of the I'm, schedule yet. So I'm going to try to shoot for that. So <laughs> just in case you're going to be around, <laughs> I might be, I, I yeah. don't know. I, I, I don't know. I haven't got that far yet. I just, I just, I just had the, the ink, you know, dry to get this show up and running again. So I haven't gotten any further than that. I feel you. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel yeah it's all good though. Sick. Um, cool. For anybody listening or watching at home, uh, please check out all the links down below because I'm going to put, I'm, I'm going to blow Reese's spot up. If you want to see <laughs> some really good, insightful, but also very out of pocket and um, <laughs> hilarious commentary on drifting at all levels from, from digital and Roblox all the way to, to FD level, like go check it out. Um, yeah, dude. Thank, thank you again for doing this. I'm, I'm so pumped. to. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, dude. Happy to, like I said, this is, yeah. this is a dream come true for me. So I, I feel like it's a, I maybe not being on the podcast, a dream come true, but like for you to, to get your say and put your stamp on the sport, man, like definitively. Yeah. I just hope, uh, God, I just hope the world doesn't hate me too much. Ah, man. Okay. You know It'll I mean? be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I enjoyed it. I, I appreciate it. And I, I appreciate all the uh, the enthusiasm for everyone. I, I think it'll be fine. I don't think it's going to be bad as people think. No, it'll be good. Um, I think there's a lot of love. Uh, I think everyone in the community um, is going to do a lot together, and I think you guys are going to see a lot more, uh, a lot more good things coming from FD this year. It just takes time. Nothing happens overnight. Yeah. It's all a process, and uh, that's what we're all here for. Agreed. Agreed. Sick. Well, thanks again, man. Thanks again for everybody for listening, and Thank you. catch everybody soon.